I just got that. <laughs> I just got oh, it now. I know. That was still. <laughs> what does it mean? All right, it's time. Do you want to tell them? Yeah. yeah. Can you replace? Uh, we, we don't need that mic's on He's up there, do we? Well, he's with us, but he's uh, we will Sorry. find out soon enough. Okay, I'm going to call to order this meeting of the uh, May 16, 2019 Nashua City Planning Board. Mr. Secretary, could you uh, call the roll? Yes, Mayor Donches. Mike Peterson. Present. Scott LeClaire. Here. Adam Varley. Here. Edward Weber. Here. Alderman David Tenza. Alderman Marianne Mazzilla Goya. Steve Ducrane. Present. David Robbins. Present. Jerry Rapucci. Here. Maggie Harper. Here. Okay. So we uh, obviously have a quorum. We have everybody here. Um, <clears throat> so we have in front of us some minutes from the May 2nd, 2019 Planning Board meeting. Has anybody had a chance to take a look at those and want to make a motion either way as to whether they uh, can be accepted as submitted? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes as written. All right, so we have a motion to accept as written. Do I have a second on that? I'll second. Say. All right, second by Mr. Varley. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> and then any abstentions? One. One. Two. Abstention. Two abstentions, Ed. Is that that? Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, communications, Roger. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the Planning Board. You have three items in your packet tonight that you didn't uh, get uh, mailed to you. Uh, they all pertain to case number two. Uh, the first is uh, an email from the Economic Development Director, uh, Tim Cummings, uh, generally in support of case number two. You might want to read that uh, when the item comes up on your agenda. Uh, you have a uh, communication from, uh, to Chad Brandon from the engineering department, uh, um, from Joe Mandola, and that's uh, concerning their comments uh, on, on the project, and that's attached. And then lastly, you have a revised uh, stormwater management report pre prepared by Fieldstone uh, okay. for case number two again. And that's all I have. Thank you. All right. Um, report of uh, Chairman Committee Liaison, Ed. Yes, just one thing. Um, uh, Nashua Regional Planning Commission has moved from um, Merrimack to Nashua. They're at 30 Temple Street. In a nice area. They had an open house this last yesterday morning. They had an open house for the people that regularly go there. It's a nice area, nice place to be now, too. Okay. Convenient. Thank you. All right. Okay. So I'll, um, can't tell it. Is everybody here from an applicant or is anybody here just from general public? Raise your hand if you're just general public. Okay. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and read the uh, procedure of the meeting and, and hearings. Um, so after each legal notice of each conditional special use permit site plan or subdivision is read by myself, um, the board will first determine if the application is complete and ready to take jurisdiction. Um, if we do take jurisdiction, the public hearing will begin, at which time the applicant or representative will be given time to present an overview and description of their project. They'll speak to whether or not they agree with the recommended staff stipulations, and the board will have an opportunity to ask relevant follow-up questions of the applicant and staff. I'll then ask for testimony from the audience. <clears throat> First, anyone wishing to speak in opposition or concern to the plan may speak. Please come forward to the microphone, state your name and address for the record. It'll be the time for you to express any concerns you may have or ask any questions you may have regarding the plan. <clears throat> Next, I'll ask for uh, testimony from anybody wishing to speak in favor of the plan. 
I'll then ask for any relevant follow-up question, or I'll then ask the board if they have any relevant follow-up questions uh, of the applicant. The applicant will then be given a rebuttal period, at which time they'll respond to any of the concerns raised by the public testimony. Um, if so needed, I'll allow one public member, member to come forward after that. Um, if there's more than one person, they can get together and, and sort of elect one representative to speak and respond to only those items brought forth during the applicant's rebuttal period. After this has been completed, the public hearing will end. The board will resume a public meeting, at which time we'll deliberate and vote on the application that's before us. I'd ask that both sides keep their remarks to the subject at hand and to not repeat what has already been said. We want to be fair to everyone and make the best possible decision based on the testimony presented and considering all applicable approval criteria established in our national revised ordinances for special uh, conditional special use permits, site plans, and subdivision plans. Uh, I thank everybody at this time for their interest and attention. I ask that if you do have a cell phone that you go ahead and silence or put it on vibrate at this time. Okay. So old business conditional special use permits, there are none. Old business subdivision plans, there are none. Old business site plans, there are none. New business conditional special use permits, there are none. New business subdivision plan, case number one, National Milliard Associates Incorporated owner, application and acceptance of proposed subdivision of two lots into five lots. This property is located at L Pine Street, sheet 77, lot 36 and 37 in Ward 4. Um, I'd ask of the board, has anybody had a chance to review this uh, application and determine that it's ready for us to take jurisdiction? We take jurisdiction. All right, so we have a, a motion to take jurisdiction by Mr. Rapucci. Do I have a second? Second by Mr. Peterson. Uh, any, dis uh, all or any discussion on that? No. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion passes. All right, it's all yours. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, my name is Steve Auger. I'm a project manager with Hainer Swanson, and our office is located here in Nashua at 3 <coughs> Congress Street. I'm here tonight on behalf of Nashua Milliard Associates. Uh, we've come before you seeking subdivision approval uh, for two lots into five lots. Um, if you look at the plan I've put up on the board, uh, what I've done is the existing state of the two lots I've highlighted in yellow, uh, so they're both somewhat kind of uh, triangular lots, and what we're proposing uh, is highlighted in red to cut them into five smaller lots. Uh, very quickly, some information about the lots. Uh, they are lots 36 and 37 on map 77. Uh, combined, they total 0.262 acres in size. The zone we are in is general industrial with mixed use overlay. Both lots front on Pine Street, uh, and they are abutted by uh, tracks in the mill yard and the Broad Street Parkway. Um, kind of to, to summarize, uh, the way we arrived at this point is during the design and construction of the Broad Street Parkway, there, there was some land takings uh, from the mill yard associates. And when, when it was all said and done, what we were left with is those two lots that I've highlighted in yellow. Um, they're both non-buildable lots. They're both very small. They're, they're basically, uh, it's, it's kind of useless land. Um, so what we are proposing is to subdivide them into those uh, five smaller lots. Uh, if the plan is approved and recorded, then National Mill Yard Associates, who they own both tracks, they will take each of those five lots and they will transfer them to the abutting lot owners by deed. Um, once that takes place, then the, the parent tracks of, of those owners, what they can do is they can use uh, an instrument called the merger parcels form available um, in the planning department. And very simply, the way that works is when you have two land tracks that fall under the exact same ownership entity and they abut each other, uh, you can work at the planning department and the assessing department and get a new lot number and simply record it at the 
registry of deeds and that merges it as opposed to going through the entire process of creating a consolidation plan and coming before the planning board. So it's, it's a simple way to just merge two lots. Um, and basically once, once that's done, um, that will, will clean up kind of what was out there um, for the, the leftover two remnant parcels um, that resulted from the Broad Street Parkway construction. Uh, we, we are asking for one waiver. Um, Mr. Chairman, as I typically do, I'd like to read it just to get it on the record. Sure. Um, <clears throat> we are requesting a waiver of section 190-282B9. This waiver regards showing on the plan specific existing conditions on and adjacent to the site, including topography. Uh, we are requesting to not show the existing conditions of the two tracks and to not show the topography of the two tracks. The purpose of this plan is to subdivide the two remaining remnant tracks into five tracks. These two non-conforming, non-buildable lots were created from takings associated with the Broad Street Parkway construction. Upon approval, the five newly created parcels will be conveyed and subsequently merged with the appropriate abutting owner tracks, thus eliminating these two now non-conforming parcels, showing the existing topography and existing conditions on the two parcels and in Pine Street, where no construction is proposed by this plan, would only cause National Mill Yard Associates to spend additional funds as they continue through the approval process. In summary, we feel that the above requests are reasonable and meet the criteria outlined in section 190-282 subdivision plans of the National Land Use Code. We also feel that the above request meets the spirit and intent of the National Land Use Code and a strict enforcement of the above section would pose a hardship to the applicant. Thank you for consideration in this matter. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Can you just step through quickly, like, if for each of these lots, which parcel um, or lot they're... Who, who, who would get what? Yeah, how do, how's the... Yeah, just sure. so we have kind of a record of where the intent of them going is. Oh, see, I just need to approach Yeah, that'd be great. You, you can grab Ed's microphone or something while you're up there. Um, so, so this lot here, proposed lot 46, um, I, I'm 99% certain on this, the uh, Milliard's attorney couldn't make it tonight, he had a, another conflict, he knows better than I do, but I'm almost positive this lot will merge with this guy right here. This small lot right here will merge with that one. This, uh, let me go over this lot yeah. will merge with this one here. Okay. And this lot will merge with that one. And I believe this lot here, this lot I think is going to this one as well. Oh, so two of them would go to the, the one with the building on it? Correct. So basically it gives these abutting lots now, uh, it'll all give them some amount of frontage on Pine Street, whereas they, before this all began, they didn't have it because they were just, you know, abutted up against, you know, a different lot. But essentially, they all can go somewhere because it'd be kind of undesirable for one of the little ones. To be right. Left over yep, up. and and that's why uh, I, I I wasn't part of creating yeah. the new lot lines, but that's how they were divvied up to more or less give uh, to to make you know somewhat sense of, of giving, you know, what small parcel to, to the bigger tracks. Okay. Other questions from the board for the applicant? Okay. All right. This time I'd ask, is anybody in the audience wishing to speak in opposition or concern to the plan? Anybody wishing to speak in favor? Hearing none, any further questions of the applicant or staff while we're in the hearing? Okay, anything else from the applicant that you want to? Okay. Sure, Mr. Rafuki. Does the staff have a positive recommendation on this? 
Yes. Is it, is it here? Um, there's really nothing uh, written in the staff you, report. You guys staff are involved in this whole thing, and it's all good for you. With it and we would recommend um, this for approval. Okay. Thank you. Great. Okay. Any further questions? Hearing none, I'll go ahead and um, close the hearing, move into the public meeting. So uh, we just have a sort of a five lot subdivision here explained by the applicant. Seems pretty straightforward. The intent seems positive to me. Anybody else have any discussion items they want to talk about in the meeting? Here? Mr. Barley. I make a motion if anyone has anything else to add. Go ahead. Make a motion to approve new business number one subdivision, uh, finding that it does meet the requirements outlined in site plan or sorry in NRO section 190-138G, with one stipulation, being a waiver request, uh, requesting a waiver of section 190-282B9, um, and that request reading is granted. Will not be contrary to the spirit and intent of the regulation. Okay, so we have that motion to approve. Um, as stated by Mr. Varley, um, do we have any second on that? Second by Mr. Weber. Any discussion? Sure, Mr. Pucci. It, the the um, right portion of this abutting mm -hmm. Pine Street, mm -hmm. the drawing looks like it has no sidewalk there. Maybe it does. Mm. But if it doesn't, do they need a waiver for that? Well, this is a curb cut, right? There's a curb cut, and then there's a sidewalk, and there's curb cuts. It looks to me like it has sidewalks except with a curb cut. Curb OK, cut. then that's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, I don't. That's all good. That's all I, that's uh, no, what I nothing for see. OK. Uh, any other discussion items? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion passes. Thanks. Okay. All right. So, new business site plans. Case number two, 267 Main Street Realty LLC owner. Application and acceptance of proposed. Uh, Amendment to NR1625 to construct an 1,827 square foot coffee shop with a drive through and associated site improvements. Property is located at 267 Main Street. Do I have a motion that this uh, application is ready for the board to take jurisdiction? So moved. Uh, we have a motion by Mr. Peterson to take jurisdiction. I have a second. I'll second it. Second by Mr. Rapucci. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Motion passes. Okay, it's all yours. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, good evening. My name is Andy Prolman, attorney with Prunier and Prolman here in Nashua. Um, and we have a uh, full team for you tonight to present the proposed uh, Duncan at 267 Main Street. Uh, I'm representing 267 uh, Main Street Realty Limited Liability Company. Um, whose uh, members are Joe and Rick Carvalho, um, who are here um, in the front row. Chad Brannon is going to walk us through the plans and the, uh, the engineering um, of the site. Giles Hamm um, is here tonight on the, from Vanessa and Associates, who did the traffic analysis. Um, and Jackie Daly Brusso is our architect, um, who will have a presentation for you and have samples and, and renderings and, and elevations um, for, for the board. Um, I would like to introduce Joe and Rick Carvalho. Um, if you don't know them, um, you need to go to Dunkin' Donuts more because they are um, the owners of the Canal Street Dunkin' Donuts, uh, the East Hall Street Dunkin' Donuts, uh, the Dunkin' Donuts at, at Seminole Plaza, and the Dunkin' Donuts that's in the Shaw's in Seminole Plaza. Um, Joe and Rick are local um, owners. They're not corporate franchisees. They are hands-on, um, on-site every day in one of the uh, four restaurants that they have, and they're hoping to open the um, fifth one uh, with, the, with, with an approval tonight. Um, Joe and Rick may comment at the end. Um, Rick um, 
uh, in particular. Um, often we're concerned about queues um, and traffic and with Dunkin' Donuts, and so Rick um, is very good at, at queue management um, with Dunkin' Donuts. Um, he can turn customers and cars um, in matters of seconds. Uh, one thing, just, to, just to, um, as a preliminary matter, uh, Mr. Chairman and members, um, is uh, I, I just want to touch on the environmental uh, piece of what's going on um, because this was an old gas station and uh, there were spills um, in years past. And we have been working with uh, ExxonMobil and their environmental engineer, Kleinfelder. Uh, ExxonMobil was a prior owner um, of the property. They bought the property from the Gibbs um, Tire and Gas Station. Um, and um, the good news here is that what Kleinfelder um, has been doing um, over the past few years, uh, they've been injecting um, a certain, certain chemicals into the ground um, to, um, I lost my train of to uh, address the petroleum uh, molecules that are in the ground so to, to become in compliance with DES standards to bring um, the standards below uh, the DES uh, thresholds. Um, and we had Kleinfeld to prepare the April 18th report uh, that was in your packet. Uh, and you can see um, that they are confident um, that the current round of treatment, that is, you may have seen some activity on the site very recently, um, they are hopeful that it will be successful and they believe that they are very close to concluding their uh, remediation work. Um, the, if there's any more remediation or groundwater monitoring um, in their report, they do say that that can be done. At this point, it's so successful that can be done concurrent with any um, development um, of the site. Um, we have provided a site suitability report because we're in the mixed-use district. Um, and I'm not going to read the report um, word for word, but I will tell you that we, we check off a lot of boxes um, that the mixed use in the, in the D1 district um, call for um, with respect to uh, the master plan and designing these sites. Um, and we have worked uh, with staff uh, a lot. We've had a lot of meetings with Roger and Linda um, and all of staff. Um, and to their credit, they have called out for us to really take a, make sure we have a, a two-story facade, put the parking in the back, um, screen the front of the building um, as much as possible to give the effect that it's, it's as close to the sidewalk um, as possible. Um, we have a brick facade. We didn't have a brick facade to start with. We have a brick facade now. Um, we have an infill development. We have sidewalk improvements um, and crosswalk improvements. So. We, we really uh, think that we are addressing the concerns uh, that are raised in the master, master plan in the D1 district. Uh, Mr. Chairman, we have been through the staff report and the proposed conditions from both staff and engineering, and we uh, agree with those. We have no objection. Um, and so that's my intro. And so I would like to have Chad start us off with a uh, detailed review of the plans. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. For the record, my name is Chad Brandon. I'm a civil engineer with Fieldstone Land Consultants. Our office is located at 206 Elm Street in Milford, New Hampshire. Um, as uh, Attorney Perlman explained, uh, the plan that we have before you this evening has gone through an extensive review process um, consisting of numerous meetings with city staff, including um, uh, staff at the Community Development Office. Um, we've met multiple times with the engineering engineering office, traffic, and fire. Um, we believe this process has created the best development plan uh, for this project and for the uh, community. Uh, Attorney uh, Perlman gave kind of a brief summary of the history of this property, and, and uh, the property has been vacant for some time. I think everybody's um, familiar with the site. And so this proposed development will ultimately rejuvenate um, the area. The subject property is known as tax map parcel 93-13. It's situated at the intersection of uh, Prospect Avenue and Main Street. 
consists of 0 0.43 acres of land and is in the D1 MU zone. The existing conditions of the site consist of the rem remnants of the former gas station that occupied the property last, and this uh, includes a steel building, eight fueling stations and fueling locations, a canopy, as well as access and parking areas, including uh, two curb cuts out onto uh, Main Street. The de development of this site will include the um, demoing and raising of all of those existing improvements and the construction of a new Dunkin' Donuts restaurant consisting of approximately 1,830 square feet. Um, along with the restaurant, there will be a drive-through uh, window and associated site improvements. As Attorney Perlman stated, this will be a two-story building. Um, this, that ultimately was um, a detail that came out through the review process with the Community Development Office. And the final layout will provide for um, safe vehicular and pedestrian travel to and from the site. Other site improvements that we have with this project include internal access aisles, walkways, landscaping, lighting, drainage, and utility infrastructure improvements. The main entrance to the property will be off of Prospect Street, as shown on the uh, site plan that we have before you this evening. Excuse me, Prospect Avenue. <clears throat> the, at the main entrance, customers will have an option of, of entering the drive-through um, lane or ultimately entering the parking lot area. The parking lot area will consist of 13 parking spaces, uh, which includes one handicap accessible space. The main entrance um, to the building will be situated at the northwest corner of the building, which um, has, has that facing the, the main entrance to the site, site on Prospect Avenue, and it also does favor um, the intersection of Prospect Ave and Main Street. Pedestrian traffic on site will be handled by the construction of a sidewalk on the west side of the proposed building. There will also be sidewalks constructed along uh, Main Street. The sidewalk along Main Street will consist of closing the two existing curb cuts um, that, that are out there today. Um, there will also be a sidewalk constructed along um, Prospect Ave as we are proposing some improvements in that area as well. The drive-through for the project will provide for 260 feet of stacking distance. This equates to about 13 uh, vehicles um, for stacking. The drive-through design also provides for a partial bypass lane that would allow cars to exit the site and head south down uh, Main Street. The site will be serviced by municipal sewer, Penichuk water, natural gas, and underground utilities such as electric uh, phone and cable. And the lighting design for this project consists of a blend of pole mounted and building mounted lights and the design does comply with all of the city standards. The landscaping and buffering uh, for the project will be accomplished through a series of fencing and um, um, uh, planting um, some landscaping. Along the west and south uh, borders of the property, we've agreed to install a six foot high uh, white um, vinyl stockade fence. And then along the front of the property, uh, basically at the right-of-way line, we're proposing to construct a brick and wrought iron fence that's more of an architectural component um, that is a consistent element that you will just currently find in the downtown district, but will also provide some um, shielding of the um, drive-through lane and those activities from anybody traveling along Main Street. The drainage design for this project um, consists of essentially curbing all of the access ways and uh, parking areas and constructing a closed uh, drainage system. We're basically going to capture all of the improvements from the site. We're going to route the stormwater um, through an underground um, detention uh, system, which is a chambered system, a concrete system. Um, that'll mitigate all of the uh, rates of flow leaving the site so that there'll be no increase in runoff over the pre-development conditions. Um, that system does tie into the combined uh, sewer and water um, system along 
are under uh, Prospect Avenue currently, uh, but that has been reviewed uh, by engineering. Along with all of the on-site improvements, this project does propose considerable off-site improvements. Um, these improvements include um, considerable work with Prospect Ave. Uh, we basically worked closely with staff on trying to provide some improvements to that intersection. Um, the improvements consist of in adding an additional lane, so there'll be two lanes exiting uh, Prospect Ave. By adding a lane, it does help with the alignment of, of uh, Prospect Avenue and uh, Prospect Street, which is across the road, and the uh, Main Street intersection. Other improvements in that area will consist of relocating the pedestal sign, or excuse me, signal. Um, again, constructing a new sidewalk along uh, Prospect Ave. Um, reworking the crosswalks in that area. We'll be redoing the crosswalk across Main Street. We'll also be redoing the crosswalk across Prospect Street, and there'll be a new crosswalk for our, the main entrance of the uh, project. So these are all considerable Im improvements offsite that I think will benefit not only our project, but just the traffic flow in that area as well. Along with the intersection improvements, there will be some signal um, timing modifications, and we do have the traffic engineer here tonight so he can address any questions that the board may have relative to that. With the offsite improvements that are being proposed, we are depicting a right away dedication on the plan. So we'd basically um, be dedicating a portion of the property to the city that would encompass um, those, those improvements. And as Mr. Uh, Perlman stated, um, we are happy to report that we have worked diligently with staff over the last couple of weeks, and I do believe we have a favorable review from engineering um, and other departments uh, relative to this project. Uh, we are in agreement with all of the uh, staff recommendations with one modification um, that I would like to add, and that is uh, when we submitted the um, original application for this project, we included a stormwater waiver. In working with um, engineering and, and going through the review process of this plan, uh, we were able to come up with a design that meets city standards, so we will withdraw, withdraw that waiver. We no longer need that. So with that, Mr. Chairman, I'd be happy to try to answer any questions that the board may have at this time, or I can hand the floor over to another one of our uh, project professionals. Okay, thanks. Um, questions from the board, Mr. Pucci? Anything from the fire department? Have they reviewed this? Are they comfortable with, really the only access is, is Prospect Street, right? Yeah, the fire department has reviewed the design and they are happy with the layout and I think st um, staff could verify that as well. They've been at a couple of the meetings um, and there's been no issues with, you know, with fire relative to this project. I think there was an email and I may have it in the file I didn't see that. Though. Thank you. There is an email a letter. in your file, uh, in your um, packet from the fire marshal, okay. dated April 2nd, that they had no concerns with the proposed project. Thank you. The, um, the stacking, you talk about the 16 cars. Is that what you said? 16, 13 cars. 13? Yeah. That's from where to where. Is that up to the order point, or is that up to the order delivery window? I believe that's up to the window. Okay. Other questions? Mr. Roberts? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, boy, this is engineered pretty tightly, isn't it? It's a, I mean, it's a, t it's a tight site, and we've tried to accommodate a lot of feedback and requests. Mm -hmm. um, the Prospect Street improvements have kind of tightened the window a little bit, but we, it meets all engineering standards, and we've run all the vehicle templates through the site. Um, the drainage complies with city standards, so we meet all the um, design requirements for this project. But there's a, there's a lot going on on the property. I, I, it, it certainly looks like it. Just, just a couple of, of questions. Uh, it, it appears as though, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, that if the, uh, the stack from the service window goes back 
to the drive through ordering point then vehicles will block the access that comes out onto main street is that correct that's correct that's a partial bypass lane so it's it's not really intended to be a primary exit to the project but that would be blocked if if people were queuing through that area okay really the reason why we didn't curb that section is so that um, um, the there could be access to the dumpster location if you see where the dumpster is located okay. and then it just offers kind of a secondary um, exit to the property for people who are utilizing the parking lot and maybe going south on main street they can they could utilize that bypass lane to, to leave well i i I, per, I personally appreciate uh because it's it's something that i look at the fact that there is an escape lane in the sense that there is some way for people to get out and not be blocked into the uh, most people not blocked into the uh you know, if something were to happen that uh, uh, was of concern, some kind of uh, public uh, issue. It, as far as, so what I hear you saying is most of the, all of the in traffic and almost all of the out traffic is going to go out onto Prospect Ave, is that correct? That's what I would anticipate, yes. Does it, you know, Dunkin' Donuts and, and there's some other places are are very very popular i don't think that's that's a controversial thing to say and uh i have seen dunkin donuts in the area from time to time uh different times of the day 15 cars backed up and what i'm a little bit concerned with is great location for this boy the hospital's right across the way a lot of people uh i i if this passes, I, I hope it does wonderfully well. Uh, I'm just a little concerned about coming in and out of uh, Prospect Avenue. There's not, there's about 24 feet wide and you're trying to get cars coming in this way and staying to the right and cars coming around and not a great deal of uh, space once you get out onto Prospect to stack you know, you might have uh, three cars there and then you've got cars jammed up coming out of the lot. Um, at, at high traffic times of the day, are, are you gonna have a police officer there or do you see a problem with that? Well, we do have the traffic engineer here this evening, so we're bordering close on uh, that being a better question for him because I do believe they, they, did, they did an analysis on um, the stacking for the site um, but the my understanding and in talking with the uh, in reviewing the traffic report and ultimately in talking with the owners who also run a couple uh, Dunkin Donuts in the area um, they, they don't anticipate any issues in fact they're very good at what they do and I think uh, when they get up here and, and explain um, some of the you know time frames that they are able to accomplish in the drive-through process I think that you know that would maybe speak to your concern as well um, but we don't anticipate you know an issue with Prospect um, Street and the intersection I think the off-site improvements you know certainly have something to do with that that's a it's a it's a, a, a benefit cars will build the ex exit and uh, as a free right out of there so you know there will be vehicles having a free movement um, at that intersection, I believe. So I'm not anticipating any issues there, um, but I think the, uh, w I would ask the traffic engineer to address that as well. Okay, uh, thank you. Be happy to, w when he or she is available, we'll speak with him. Thank you. Mr. Weber. Thank you. A um, couple of questions. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, is there going to be a handicap push button at the entrance? I believe that's required. No, I just wanted to make sure. The, the architects here, she would okay. be a better one for that question, okay. but I'm pretty sure that's required. Um, the second one is there's a lot of foot traffic in this area, and it's part of this uh, smart streets. Uh, do you think it would be a good idea to have a bicycle stand in um, on the uh, north uh, sidewalk area 
Just a thought. Don't, it's not a requirement. I wouldn't put a stipulation in there at all. Just might be because of the area that you're going to be in. There's a lot of foot traffic, a lot of bike traffic in that area, and it might. You, know, you just talk talk it over with your committee sometime. Not today. Just something that might be smart thing to do is put a bike stand there for people that are bicycling and wanting to stop. Yeah. No, I think that's a that's a great question, and I will say, in fact. I thought there was one on here because I do know that the traffic engineer recommended um, that we put one on site, so we will put one okay. on site. One of those things to just, I, I wasn't sure. Um, on the exit arrows, um, it might be a really good idea to use a high temperature, the one on the right hand exiting. Uh, high temperature because the amount of traffic flow there, uh, just a painted surface may um, go away. The paint may just be gone, whereas a high temperature paint, I know it's more expensive, but it might last a great deal longer and, and you won't have to repaint. Just an idea, not required. Um, I think I think the it is required. yeah okay. and I think and in fact the latest revision to the plans I think that's one of the engineering comments that okay. that they made is uh, uh, they they asked for the um, thermoplastic um, paint so mm -hmm. yeah okay um, just re ta talked about um, that area where there's a exit from the site and it's part of the drive-through area. Do you think a don't block this area painted on the ground be a good idea? Don't block, in other words, the car is don't block this area. It'll be striped through that area, so it'll be defined as a, you know, a separate lane. Um, sometimes when you stripe things like don't, don't block it, people don't think they can drive okay. over that to exit. So we'll paint it as a, as a lane, okay. um, and I think that'll help. That would, yeah. And that's all I have. Thank you. Mr. Bucci. Yeah, I, I'm just hope you can clarify for me what the intention is of that, talking about the same spot there, because I thought I understood you to say that if, if it wasn't for the dumpster being over there, you would have curbed that out. So is, is that opening an intricate part of the design, or is it, is it just optional either way in your opinion? The reason I ask is because the one on, on West Hollis Street kind of has a similar turnout. As you're going around the, the turn into that stack. And I think they have it closed off. I think they chain it. I'm pretty sure they do. But it, it do, you don't have the ability when you're in the stack lane to turn out into the parking lot the same circumstance here. So I, I'm, I'm not saying I think it should be one way or the other. I'm just saying clearly in that Dunkin' Donuts, it's blocked. So what, what, what's the motive of it, I guess, is the question. So when we laid out the site and we designed you know, the parking area and everything, the primary purpose that it's opened is for access to the dumpster. Um, at one time, we had that closed. After we opened it, I think it's nice to have that option for a secondary exit out of the parking lot. Um, frankly, once we had that you know, on the plan, it, I think that works. I am familiar with the uh, Dunkin' Donuts that you're referring to. Um, I want to say that that's open, and I do know that the Chick-fil-A on um, Amherst Street has a similar situation, and it's open to the drive through area. It's not a requirement to be open, um, but I do think it's a better design now that we have it that way on the plan. I think it just offers some flexibility uh, with people that may want to exit the site. If, if there's nobody queuing in that area, they could, they could utilize that bypass um, lane and take a right and go, down, go south down Main Street. I don't think there's any harm in that, but the primary reason why it's open, and I think the the basis of your question was it, we initially designed it that way to have access to the dumpster. Thank you. <clears throat> Other questions from the board? This 
Harbor. Um, just a, a quick question about the um, remediation of the petroleum. So what, I guess at this point, what is the timeline as far as retesting and all of that? I'm going to let uh, <laughs> Attorney Perlman answer that one. Thank you. Not soon enough <laughs> for my client. Let me, um, uh, for the record, An Andrew Perlman uh, for the applicant. As best I can answer your question, um, there were a series of uh, in two additional injection events um, on uh, April 15th, th April 15th th through April 18th, and then May 6th through May 9th. Kleinfelder will be back on site to collect um, uh, samples uh, on May 27th. They test the samples, they come back with the results, that get submitted to DES. If those samples show that uh, we are below the DES threshold for the <laughs> organic compounds, um, then DES will want another set of testing. They, they want um, testing kind of, they want two, two samples separated by a little bit of time. And if all that goes well, then we get a, a no further action letter, perhaps later this year. Um, DES may say, no, we're still elevated. We need to do another round of injections. Um, but we're very close. We are hopeful, talking with Kleinfelder, that we have a no further action letter from DES uh, with continued groundwater monitoring, monitoring, monitoring by the end of this year. Um, and that, that's, uh, let me just say that that's by no means dead certain. Um, you know, the, they, it may go on further, but in talking with ExxonMobil and Kleinfelder, th that's the impression we're getting. And you are anticipating on keeping the monitoring wells? Oh, yeah, at yeah, that yeah. Point? Oh, sure, yeah. I know one of the plans had showed that you, perhaps you would have to move or remove one of them. Oh, no, the, those wells will be um, on site for some time under a groundwater management permit with DES, and the responsibility will transfer to the Carvalhos to uh, conduct testing, submit those every spring to DES, um, and if <coughs> provided the we're below the uh, thresholds, we're, we're good. If, if some, for some reason, over time, the th th uh, we're above the thresholds, then they're gonna have to take some more remediation. Okay, thank you. I, I just wanted to clarify the monitoring wells. We, we are gonna be removing, I think, one or two of the monitoring wells on site, but we'll be doing that in in collaboration with the environmental company. So if another one needs to be put in in order to continue the monitoring, then that'll be done. But I think they're talking about only one or two monitoring wells needing to remain. And, and I believe that they're the ones that, that we can uh, maintain. So okay. there, there is notes in the plan saying yes, that right. some will be removed. There's also notes stating that they will we'll be working with um, the environmental company to make sure that uh, if there's a need for one in, that we put back. That also was addressed through the engineering review uh, process in the last couple of weeks, so. Thank you. Yep. Well, before you head down there. Um, so I, I have a little bit of a concern where you come out of the doors of the, just the building um, in your, you've got that crosswalk from the um, sort of concrete to, that gets you to the prospect sidewalk sort of down to the left on the plan here. Mm -hmm. And you know, human nature, this, you're causing someone to walk further away from the crosswalk to get across Main Street and then come back, right? So they gotta go left for a while and then, so is there anything to stop them from coming out the door, taking a right and walking straight across that turning movement? Because that's the issue we have with drive-throughs is as a Folks are coming out of the drive-through. They picked up their food, and they're making the turn. And, and it, it, right at the corner, if someone's coming around the corner when the car is making the corner, I mean, we've seen like little fencing or, or um, bollards or you know something that causes the people not to be able to walk off that right-hand turning movement. So, are we talking about this crosswalk right here? The plan. Yeah, right at the right at the the corner no. of. But yeah, so if you come out that door, that's the main entrance, right? Right at the. So top. the main entrance is in this corner, right? Right. Here. But do you want them to come out 
go to the left and cross over, right? So we've, I mean, we've honestly, we've, we've gone back and forth on the location of this crosswalk, and I can kind of explain it to you from a couple different directions. We initially had the crosswalk designed in this location here. To right. With the sidewalk, so they just walk across the prospect street. That's what our plan shows, actually, that we Oh, have. we. Ours is here. Yeah, so the plan was revised. That plan that's on the board. Do you mind if I approach and? Go ahead. Yeah, just bring the mic. Yeah, so I see you have it here now at up this right. corner. But so do, do you have a concern with the site distance there? No, with part that? of so would we we initially the plan that you have shows it here. Right. And we had a cross we had a kind of a walkway across that landscaped area. When we went through the engineering review, there was a there was some feedback as to anybody walking along Main Street is going to take that B line to the main right. entrance. And so this is actually going to be the area that's probably practically going to be used more. Right. I, I tend to agree I tend to agree with that so we agreed to make the revision to put the walkway here and the crosswalk there. The nice part about the crosswalk being here is it's visible b from somebody that's that parked and taking their order. So they will always see somebody in there. If we put it around the corner in here, yeah. then they would be blind. And so that's part of the reason why we kind of snuck that further um, in that direction okay all right yeah that's different than our plan we have it back here yeah because we've also seen like you know making a barrier here so that the the pedestrians can't go there they have to go that way and then across over but yeah other questions mr. Rapucci How many windows? How many drive up windows? I'm going to let the um, architect, she's going to present the plan, so I think that, that would, uh, she would be able to explain that. Okay. There's, there's, there's one drive up window. One drive up window, yes. Okay, so in the unlikely event, which happens just about every time I ever go there, um, something is not ready and a driver has to pull up to wait for something. If something is not ready for somebody in the stack lane at the window in a timely way, what happens next? Where do they go to, uh, they, to wait? They could have them park in the parking lot if they had to. I mean, that would be the place that they would go. Okay. They'd go, okay. Thanks. Any other questions for the civil engineer? Hear from, do you want, maybe we'll hear from traffic and then the architect. Perfect. Uh, good evening, uh, Giles Ham with Vanessa and Associates out of Andover, Massachusetts. Uh, Chad stole a lot of my thunder, so I'll be a little bit repetitive, but that's okay. And I'll clarify some of the questions that, that were asked uh, earlier. So we've done a very detailed study for the project. It's been reviewed by uh, Wayne Husband, your city traffic engineer, who provided comments. Um, when we look at a Dunkin' Donuts site, I really kind of focus on two issues. Does it have adequate drive-through storage, and, and how does the access and egress work? That's really what we need to focus on, especially with the queue storage. So in this case of this project, we monitored existing um, Dunkin' Donuts in Nashua. Um, and we feel very confident that the 13 um, car storage is adequate for the site. Um, typically, you see an average um, queue storage of about six vehicles. Um, and the maximum that we saw was, was 13 vehicles in the morning. And that only happened for a very, very brief period. So we're, we're confident that that is ac adequate storage. In terms of access and egress, I think Chad did a good job explaining it too. But the main access and egress is through the signalized intersection of Prospect Avenue and that's a controlled access, and it, g it gives us capacity every cycle to get out safely, whereas if it's an unsignalized location, you're kind of waiting for a gap. Um, we get that created every, every cyclical time, so it helps get out of the site relatively easily. Um, the, the, the right turn exit onto Main Street is really just a, a slip exit from the drive-through. It's really not a main function of the site um, in terms of exiting, um, but it also provides access to the dumpster, which is, which is important for the site um, to be successful. Um, Chad talked about in terms of mitigation and minimizing the queuing, we're providing a second lane on Prospect Avenue exiting to the signal. 
So that'll double the storage capacity um, exiting the site in terms of the queue storage there. Um, which That's I didn't mention. But too? Is that so widening? we're widening. We're widening Prospect Avenue approach. So right now there's one lane approach, and there'll be there'll be two full lanes. Okay. Um, it's probably about 11 foot widening for that for that turn lane. Okay. okay? Um, and we're also we're also closing a curb cut onto uh, Main Street. So you think about when it was a gas station operation, you had a lot of turning movements on Main Street. This project really takes the turning movements off of Main Street and puts it through a signalized location, which is better than safer um, than the prior condition you had there. In terms of other things that Chad touched on, we're upgrading um, sidewalks along the frontage. We're upgrading crosswalks in the area for safe crossings and, and, and uh, making it more direct to cross uh, Main Street. Um, there's an exclusive pedestrian phase there, so you can safely cross the street. You just press the button, it stops all traffic, and you walk across safely. So it's a very um, walkable site, um, sidewalks on Main Street and crosswalks in an exclusive pedestrian phase. In terms of traffic operations, um, the intersection operates at level service B um, operations through the build conditions, and that's a relatively good operating condition for this location here. Um, we concur with staff recommendations. Staff recommended that after we um, complete these uh, roadway changes and improvements that um, staff inspect it and, and, and agree with those changes before we get our cert certificate of occupant occupancy. Um, and we feel um, it's a safe project as planned and with the changes that um, we work with on city staff. In terms of a couple of questions that came up, um, we did recommend bike racks on site. Um, and I talked to the owners, and they will have bike racks on the site. So if it's not on the plan, it'll be added on the plans. So there'll be bike racks on the site. In, t in, in terms of in Dunkin' Donuts, are busy sites. But when you think about this site, we have exiting onto a signalized location, which gives us that capacity to get out on a regular basis. But also think about the traffic as you go through the drive through Exiting traffic is metered. We don't, you don't get a heavy flow of traffic exiting. It's very metered. You, you pick up your food and you exit, the next guy's waiting, gets their food and exits, so it's, it's really metered. And we feel with the second lane on Prospect Avenue um, that there's adequate storage there for that traffic to exit safely. Okay. Mr. Abucci? Help me understand this second access. So the, the incoming and outgoing traffic is coming from Main Street. The second, the, are you talking the two lanes on Prospect Avenue or, or the exit? Yeah, well, when people come to this Dunkin' Donuts, they're primarily coming from Main Street. Right. right. They're turning onto Prospect Street. Correct. Pro Avenue. Huh? I'm sorry. Prospect Pro Avenue. Prospect Avenue. Yeah. Prospect Street. The other Avenue. side, yeah. 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 So, <laughs> are you saying that having the, the extra lane that is exiting Duncan's and going to Main Street. Is that what's going to happen? There's going to be two lanes of travel towards Main Street. Yeah, you want me to show up on the plan? Sure, yeah, you can come on up. Just bring the mic. Yeah, it looks like a yeah, left turn. Left so right. it, was, it was not part of the original plan, but in, through discussions with staff, um, right now there's one lane coming out. In the future, there'll be a left turn lane and a through light turn lane. So there'll be two lanes exiting where you only have one lane there today. Okay. And that's all I had about that. Um, just to understand that. So if the stack does back up, the stack is actually. So we don't expect stacking to back up exiting the site. No, no. The, the entering, entering, we have we have thirteen vehicles of storage. I I know exactly what you're doing. Okay. What I'm asking you is, when it does stack up, it's just going to be on the incoming. It's going to back up onto the incoming lane of Prospect Street. Backs up from here, from the from the pickup window, back to there. And what happens when that's not? There's no capacity there the cars go on to Prospect Ave. The so, right. Entry so, pot from Main Street. Right. So we feel the 13 vehicles is adequate based on what we've seen in the community. If it becomes further than 13 uh, vehicles, it would back up onto, onto the entering on Prospect Avenue. But I think that the owners can explain to you how they process um, the drive-through 
in an efficient manner in, or, in order to minimize those cues. Okay. Mr. Varley? Just a, a follow-up question in terms of the stacking. You mentioned that you looked at a number of other Dunkin' Donuts and, and specifically drive throughs How does the capacity here, the 13-car stack, how does that compare to other drive through locations that you looked at? I, I think that the one on, on Broad Street probably had a little bit longer um, in, terms of, in terms of queue storage, but um, I, I've seen sites with, with less queue stores than this, um, but we feel this is adequate. Um, at this site here. Thank you. Mr. Robbins. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> would, would I be, I'm, I'm trying to do this in my head and, and measure with my pen. Uh, <laughs> would, would there be room for about three cars in each of the lanes going out on Prospect Avenue, three on the left and three on the I right. I think that's correct, yeah. Before, before one gets back. It, I'm, I'm so that would be able to store six cars total. Six cars on Prospect Avenue outgoing. Right. Okay. And again, you know, keep in mind, <clears throat> um, you know, a lot of Dunkin' Donut sites exit onto busy streets at an unsignalized location. Um, and and they're, because the Dunkin' Donuts are there, they're there because it's a busy, busy site, busy street. So it becomes difficult to turn out onto the main street. Um, we have the benefit here of having a signalized location. So on a regular basis, you know, we're going to get 25 seconds of green time to exit onto main street to minimize those queues. Green time sounds like a wonderful thing. It, but it's, it, it, it's, it's there every day. It's there every minute. There we go. Um, the, the, the other question I have is I'm, I'm just thinking about uh, the size of vehicles today, you know, 190 inches, 200, 210, 220 inches, and long wheelbases, and making that turn, that 180 degree, degree turn, in, in a fairly uh, short time and place, and, and not an overabundance of open space coming in and going out. And I, I just looking at this, it seems as though there would be a good deal of con could be a good deal of congestion when the facility is busy, and I'm just wondering how you you've thought about that, and whether my concerns are relevant or or well, there's I mean there's there's pavement markings out there to direct traffic. Um, I'm sure that the site engineer has run auto turn in terms of the turning movements for the vehicular traffic, so um, this is the, the, the lane widths are adequate, um, the circulation is going to be fine. Okay. Thank you. Can, can you talk a little bit about the improvements at the intersection on Main? Did you say there's new signal, traffic so, signals, or are you, are you so the, the, what's happening there is so we're widening Prospect Avenue right. to have two lanes. So that'll require us to move a, a signal post to relocate that post. Right. Um, there'll be new sidewalks mm -hmm. um, along the site frontage. Mm -hmm. There'll be a new crosswalk crossing Prospect Avenue that is not there today. Um, the um, crosswalk crossing Main Street will be um, more of a direct route. It's kind of a, a large angle there today. Yep. Um, so those are all the changes we're going to make. Um, we will be looking at, we've already looked at it, but we will be looking at all the signal timing um, to make sure it's adequate in terms of the pedestrian crossing and the yellow phases and the yeah. all red clearances. So that'll all be reviewed as uh, part of this process. Are the, are the, um, walk don't walk the audio and visual parts of it are those being up are they being replaced are they what's the no i think we're current? using we're using what's out there my recollection is when we were out there about a year ago one of the one of the ped buttons was not working right i don't know if it's been fixed since then but that's something we would look at so we're going to have a signal designer out here and look at all the functions of the um yeah. signal operations we will submit plans to city staff to review and upon their review, we will construct the necessary improvements. And after they're mm -hmm. constructed, 
they'll be inspected by city staff to make sure they're, they're properly um, implemented prior to the occupancy of this project. So yeah. we're actually doing quite a lot um, when you really go down that list. And is it, um, a, is it a four way, like during the walk, it's a, it's all a, traffic is stopped? It's not yes, like it's a, it's a, two directions? It's an exclusive, um, yeah. it's an exclusive ped phase. When I was out there this evening, I was only out there for about 10 minutes, but I, I, it seemed like it might have been on call every, every, every cycle. So again, we'll look at that. We'll make sure there's adequate um, crossing time um, based on the latest standards. Yeah, I'm wondering if there's going to be from the corner of southern New Hampshire to the site diagonal crossing, kind of like we have on Main Street. Well, you c no, places. no, it's, 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 it's. I know you're not intending it, but I'm wondering if that's going to happen. They're going to go from the northern corner of well, southern New Hampshire. Well, right, right. You can so, walk to that so corner and you, you can we've diagonal it. Through the design plan, um, we're directing them where we want them to walk. Yeah. Um, that aside, it's an exclusive pedestrian phase, so when you press the button, everybody stops. Right. So and if that happened, they, they'd all be stopped in all directions. Anyway. Yeah. Kind of like the Main Street yeah. crosses. Yeah. But, you know, we're very confident this, this is a safe, for, for pedestrians, this is a very safe plan. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, I, could, I could see a significant amount of traffic from the hospital, potentially. Coming we, we expect there will be a fair amount of walking traffic, absolutely. And then is this signal timed with the next signal up on the northern signal or the southern this coordinated day. yeah i but yeah we so um wayne sent me the signal plan um uh, probably a week or so back and, and yes it's coordinated um we had our signal expert look at the the timings um and we'll be making recommendations as um, subsequent, if we get local approvals, then we would be making those recommendations for staff review. If that timing needs to be changed post construction and occupancy of the facility, how does that happen? Is that on the project? I believe there is a provision that if something like that would needed to post development, that we would be back there and, and make the necessary changes to the signal if, if that was needed. Um, we're not walking away from the project. Yeah, okay. yeah we, uh, <coughs> it's actually part of Mr. Mendola's comments mm -hmm. that will be included as a condition of approval. Okay. We could take a moment to talk about that a little bit more. Uh, I think the response, the latest response from Peace Storm is a note on the plan, uh, which I don't think we have in our packet. And Mr. Mendola has heard that it would be revised because we cannot put the burden on the city. Chad, you said earlier that. Yeah, we don't, we're not opposed to um, the, uh, I think there was three last kind of cleanup comments that we received this afternoon um, from uh, Mr. Mendola, and we certainly appreciate engineering taking the time to look at um, things we we really tried to make all the revisions and, and have the review for this evening so that was very helpful the note that we have on the plan I just have to find it states that and this is that this terminology was was not acceptable to the engineering but I'll read it and then I can talk about what we were uh, planning on revising and, and maybe that's appropriate right now. Um, the note says, and bear with me, my eyesight has kind of been failing lately. The traffic engineer shall reevaluate the Prospect Ave Main Street intersection six months after opening day to determine the accuracy of the assumptions made in the initial transportation impact assessment. Should the post-development analysis be inconsistent with the assumptions made in the uh, traffic impact analysis, reasonable measures that do not impact the applicant's business may be taken by the applicant to assist the city to mitigate the unacceptable results. And what we were going to take out is to assist the city. Basically, this would be um, something that the applicant would, we would make 
adjustments to the signal timing and so on, as um, um, Giles mentioned, after getting reviewing that with engineering and coming up with any adjustments if needed. Um, this might be okay for for yourself too. The have you evaluated the um, the sort of nighttime light level at the crosswalk across Maine? Um, no, we haven't done any off-site lighting evaluation. When we do, I mean, when we do site plans, the charge honestly is to do. Um, site lighting on site and make sure we don't have any light pollution or any impacts off site. So uh, we have not evaluated any lighting of the crosswalks. What I can tell you is um, the crosswalk currently exists um, and we're improving the alignment because right now the crosswalk goes more diagonal across yeah. Main Street right. and you know the plans that we have will better align that so it'll be a more p perpendicular path for pedestrians across Main Street, which is a safer way to cross the, you know, the road. Yeah. Okay. I know there's pole lights on I that. think there is a pole light there, pole but we, the we didn't side. do an evaluation of, you know, what's the lumen level and, and, and so on. Okay. Yeah, what the hours of this facility are? So the facility will be open from um, 4.30 a.m. to 11 p.m. Other questions for traffic or civil? I have one. Ms. Harper. Uh, just not to beat a, you know, a dead horse, but uh, kind of where Jerry was going earlier, how many, how many vehicles would fit in the incoming lane on Prospect Avenue should traffic overflow from the parking lot? So, I mean, just speaking to that in general, the 260 feet doesn't get you even to the main entrance to the site because if we counted that area it would impact the the people's ability to access the parking lot so there's the 260 feet ends um short of you know short of um the main entrance to the, to the property so there's at least another vehicle or two that could stack on site before um you you technically got to prospect ave and then along Prospect Ave, I think it's four or five vehicles. Yeah, you, can get, you can get up to four cars stacked. Just, just because I'm a loyal Duncan uh -huh. customer, there are a couple sites that at certain times a day they, get, they can get right. stacked up on the, on the road. I think one of the things, and I'm, again, I'm not a traffic engineer, so I don't want to step too far out of my realm, but I do know and I'm very familiar with the city, and there's a lot of other Duncan Donuts sites around and on both sides of this project. So this isn't the first one. It's, you know, there's gonna be other opportunities for people, you know, to hope, hopefully they all come here, you know, for the, m my client's sake, but there's gonna be other opportunities. So I think that this is unlike, this actually may take the load off of some of the sites that are having um, queuing issues. It's, a, it's an, another site that will share um, maybe that traffic. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Pucci? Is, the is there more of a presentation coming? Um, is this the end of it? We, we do have the architect here this evening. And well, I'll call the architect. Now. Really, I, I don't think this is a question for you, maybe for Attorney Foreman, but. Go ahead. The people who own this own the one that's down near Advanced Auto Parts, correct? Right inside the mall there. Oh, yeah, yeah. And some of the Are going to close yes. that, or is that going to stay open? I asked Joe that question today, and the answer is maybe, maybe not. There's four years to go in the lease. Um, they're going to see how they do as the site opens. Um, if it continues to work in their favor, they'll keep that going. Uh, the Seminole Plaza site, if that site is uh, not doing well, um, then they'll probably shut it down when the lease is over. Right? But the answer is to be determined. Uh, if I may, before we get sure. to uh, ac our architect, um, I would like to have um, Rick Carvalho come up and, and talk about stacking queue management and, w and what, he, what he does, what he specializes in, just because there have been a lot of questions on how to manage the 
uh, the windows and the ordering and, and whatnot. Sure. Thanks. So make sure you state your name and address. Yeah, uh, Rick Carvalho, 267 Main Street Realty, uh, 267 Main Street, Nashua. Uh, so I know there's always this big concern about the drive-through stacking, the drive-through times, the drive-through, you know, how quickly, how much, how long people have to wait. Uh, so recently over the last year, two years, three years, um, we've been recognized as the, the best operators of drive throughs in the state and potentially New England for Dunkin' Donuts franchises. Uh, and how do we do that? Well, obviously we have timers in all the stores. If you go into the one on West Hollis Street, um, it's usually in red. Um, the one on East Hollis Street is always in green, uh, and that's the one that we run. Uh, so when we look at comparisons to other stores, uh, the one that we should spend most of our time looking at is the one on East Hollis Street. The Dunkin' Donuts average is a little bit over 151 seconds per customer to get from the drive through menu board to the drive through window and gone. Um, our average time from our, in our busiest day part, which is from roughly 6.30 a.m. to about 8.30 a.m., is somewhere in the 85 second range. Uh, we do that by overstaffing our stores. You don't go into our stores and see them understaffed. We do that by creating a better workflow and a better you know, uh, ability to get things done quicker. Um, we have somebody just handing stuff out the window so you don't have to wait for the cashier to count to you know, 68 cents and change before they get you back your, your, your coffee and your, and your donut. Um, we put multiple people on our sandwich station so that when you order a sausage, egg, and cheese, somebody's making it and somebody's grabbing it and handing it out. Um, and uh, you know, we also monitor these locations via camera. So at all times, even if we're in another location, even if we're in another state, we're watching the cameras, we're able to look at it and say, hey, what's going on over there? You know, you're getting backed up, let's keep it moving, let's, let's make this, uh, let's get this going. Um, we're able to do this because we're not just franchise owners, we're franchise operators, uh, and a lot of our neighbors, other people in the city, um, unfortunately don't operate at the same standard because they have so many locations that they just kind of see it as an investment. For us, it's not an investment, it's our, it's, it's our life. Uh, so those are the you know, essential things that we do that make sure that our business runs and ticks at the highest level possible. Um, you know, I don't know if my dad will come up here and talk, but we were awarded as one of the top 10 franchises, period, uh, in the Dunkin' Donuts uh, in, in Dunkin' Donuts brand, in Dunkin' Brands, uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, and again, we just do that by being in the stores every single day. We don't even take vacations together. We haven't vacationed together in eight, nine years. Um, and I don't remember the last time we both took a day off, including Saturdays and Sundays. We are always there and we make it our priority that our drive throughs run as well as they can um, because we don't want to have the reputation that uh, some of these others have. Uh, and to go along with what Chad said, I think that's one of the biggest things that gets missed is that having another site is what is going to alleviate the pain in those, in, you know, at West Hollis Street, on Broad Street, on, you know, if you ever felt like there was a need for it at East Hollis Street. That's what's going to alleviate the pain is by creating more so that people can get it elsewhere and, uh, you know, go from there. Questions? Yes. I agree with you on the East Hollis Street Dunkin' Donuts. Good. That's the fastest Dunkin' Donuts there is. Thank you very There's much. Staff it. There's a million people working in there. No question. Absolutely. I still see cars back up on East Hollow Street sometimes. So, That's you know. That's a short stacking lane there, right? So as great as you guys are, cars back up onto East Hollow Street at busy times. What, you don't own the West Hollow Street store, right? No. So I can't dump that on you, but cars, <laughs> cars back up onto West Hollow Street virtually every morning. So. You have great engineers. You, you, you guys know what you're doing. You're very smart people. But isn't it possible that this is just too much for this location and this size lot? So I don't believe that the size of the lot will really determine the issue. Um, if the stacking's the issue, the stacking's the issue. And if we have the stacking, then there's no, I, I don't really see the, the argument for the drive through as a whole. Uh, one thing I will say is I think if you look at the traffic count numbers, West Hollow Street is substantially higher than this area of Main Street. East Hollow Street is slightly higher than this area of Main Street. Um, and this is providing more stacking. Like you said, East Hollis is kind of tight. I think there's 11 or 12 cars there. Uh, this one has 13 plus, as they said, at least two more on site, four more on Prospect Ave before you can really get to the busy road that is Main Street. So I think there is substantial amount here. 
when you say stacking, you're talking about from the service window, right? Not from the ordering location. Am I right about that? Okay. So from the ordering location, the stack is four or five cars less, probably six cars less. If you look at this, the ordering location. Yeah, it should be four cars between the ordering and the service window. Correct. I'll give you that. Four. Four. It just shows five. Five, including the one who is ordering. Correct? Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So if you count that, then five, yes. I'm not trying to beat you up. No, no, it's not a problem. Just, I guess what I'm just trying. involved in a million of these. You I know, understand. The one on New Dunstable, new, uh, Dunstable Road. Yep. Is excellent because it's way off the road. But we went through the same thing with that one. As soon as they open that one, they close this walk in one that's next to Christopher's there. You know yep. what I mean? Oh, no, I know exactly I the have location. No doubt you're going to close that, the, the, the Duncan's down on, on um, near Sim Seminole, Seminole Plaza. Plaza. Yep. And you have every right to do that. But I think that's that, the reason I'm bringing that up is because that's going to enhance the use of this one I can appreciate that right so I think we have to take that into account a little bit it's it's there's a lot of people going to you own that one too right so correct there's a lot of people in there I like that one too and, and it's but it's and it's usually busy people just walking in it's busy so the 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 drive-through is an absolute requirement for you guys right you absolutely have, you it's not an option to not have a drive through it, Right. It wouldn't, it wouldn't make any sense. I mean, we couldn't make the numbers this work. This plan would not work. Correct. Okay. But I, I guess, you know, the other thing to think about there in that location, in that um, uh, Seminole Plaza, it may not seem like it, but that Shaw's location actually uh, is, would 100% take a lot of that business, that, that 300 Main Street location would, would take away. Um, you may just, you know, you may think that 300 that that Seminole Plaza location is so busy. Um, I can assure you, from a, a business perspective, it's really not as busy as it seems. Um, and that Shaw's location would definitely be staying, uh, barring some you know crazy thing. But the game plan would be to keep that one, uh, which would take away uh, some of that business as well. So, Rick, one more question for yes. you. Yes. Um, Another advantage of East Hollow Street is when somebody does have to pull over, they pull right up, they move up two cars, and they're in the parking lot. They're right there, right? In this one, they're going to be driving around the building, crossing over where the entrance is, and pulling into where the parking area is in order to wait for their food. Is that accurate? Correct. Do you have any other Dunkin' Donuts that are like that? Uh, we only have the one drive-through location, so um, you know I can't I can't speak to others. I'm not sure exactly what you know is on Amherst Street and all those. I really don't you know I don't sure. spend too much time. Okay. Um, but I will tell you if I make too many people do that, they're going to stop coming. So I've got to figure that one out uh, ahead of time so that they're not waiting long enough that they have to do that. And that would be our game plan. Do you have a feel for how often that does happen? Honestly, right now, um, our longest wait at the drive-through this morning, so the Dunkin' average is over 150 seconds, our number one longest wait was 169 seconds. It did not happen once today. Hasn't happened in, honestly, ha maybe occasionally a Saturday morning where somebody orders eight sandwiches, it might happen. Um, but it has not happened at our location, I can promise you, this week. And, and that's sincere. So that's not a multiple time per day occurrence? For us right now, it is not. I can only speak to that. Mr. Weber? Yes, sir. You own the one, the Duncan at uh, uh, 111A Main Dunstable? No, we do not. Okay. We only own uh, Main Street and then East Hall Street. You did. Mm -hmm. Other questions? That's fine. All right. Um, should the architect was available? Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Jackie Brusso with Aronian and Associates Architects. We're out of Smithfield, Rhode Island. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the building elevations. I have a yeah. Oops. Uh, 
Which is the same thing that's up there. Um, Make sure you're at the mic just because it's sorry. recording. You can pull <laughs> it down if you need to. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Um, so we uh, started the development per our brand standard um, image, which is, is new in the last year, um, through development with the the uh, team, we've come to a solution, design solution that we feel fits in with the neighborhood. Um, we're using brick veneer and CMU veneer um, accents. We've created a line at the first and second floor with the use of a cornice. Um, the second floor is a real second floor, um, which will primarily be used for storage, um, as we really only need the first floor, but it was a requirement for the second. Um, the materials on the building, we're using brick veneer, CMU veneer, we have a couple small areas of a wood, it's a fiber cement board made to look like a, a wood clapboard siding, um, just as accent pieces to kind of bring in some of the brand imaging. Um, we have obviously the Duncan brand signage, which we can't get away without. Um, we have a couple canopies over the main storefront entry, uh, main storefront areas and the entries at the first floor. Um, they are orange. The ones over the entries um, have tie backs because they're, a, they're an actual awning canopy, so they project out three foot six, so someone standing there fiddling with something is protected from the rain. Um, the two over the main windows are only just an accent. They, they only come out a couple, uh, eight inches or so. Um, we designed the first story facade with um, the storefront idea in mind, so we have open windows. Um, that whole main corner there that faces the parking lot and the side street um, are, are kind of open, letting a lot of light into the store. Um, the drive through side, on the other side of that wall, I do have a floor plan here if anybody wants to see it. On the other side of that wall is our service area, which houses all the kitchen equipment, so we couldn't really put any real windows there. Um, but we, and I also have a, an image of the streetscape with the brick veneer um, wall with the wrought iron fence too, if you guys wanna see that. Um, that will be blocking the drive-through queuing and some of that bottom part of the, you know, even the window itself from public view as you're driving down the street. Um, the second story, we put windows on three of the four sides. Again, that's just gonna be used for storage, so those can be open, clear windows, letting some light in. Um, we used cornices at the top of both of them. We provided some vertical elements with the CMU accents. Um, and we feel that it really kind of fits in with the downtown area. The buildings that are across the street, down the street, um, have similar elements. The um, rooftop equipment, is there screening proposed? Um, so the parapet that's around the top, it's a flat roof building. We have a parapet that sticks up about two and a half feet. The rooftop units are placed in the very center of that, of that second floor. So you would have to be almost 300 feet away in order to even see the very tip of it because it's so far in, if that makes okay. sense. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. <coughs> so you said it's a two and a half foot parapet? Yes, yep. Okay. Mr. Rapucci? This might not be your question. Okay. Deliveries, where, where do they, where do the delivery trucks go? Are they gonna to have to stay on Prospect Ave? Or where on the site do they go when they're receiving? I can tell you where the delivery door is. <laughs> Fair enough. You guys wanna to speak to that? We can answer that. Okay. okay, any other architectural, before you take off, related questions? Is there any facade lighting or is it all? Um, um, there's some accent light areas like at the entry, um, it kind of lights up that wood facade. Um, and then on the side facing the parking lot there, we have um, like some verbiage. It says um, something fresh is always brewing. Mm -hmm. it, it may or may not count as a sign, so that will kind of be worked out with signage and zoning um, when we go through that phase. But if that is applicable, we'll have some accent lighting to kind of light up that. Those little wooden areas basically get some lighting. Um, and then we have a wall pack over the front, over the door, and the recessed lighting in the canopies. Okay. No ground lights up against the facade? Not currently planned. Okay. Other questions for the, Did the Mr. architect? Mr. Weber had a question about a push button, I believe, earlier. Oh, yeah. Could you oh, just yes, address we will have uh, that? Yeah, the you said it was going to be on accessibility. the standard now. It's a requirement, yeah. Some Dunkin' Donuts, no, no push button handicap. 
It, it depends when it was built. Like I know it's, I think I want to say 2009 or so and on. So like whenever we remodel one, for example, we always add it. New stores immediate, uh, get it anyways. Um, may I approach and show you guys the one with the fence? Sure. So yeah. I can that. yeah, if you're going to explain it or whatever, grab somebody's mic, that's sure. all. Um, so this is the version of the east elevation with the fencing system there. We've got seven feet to the top of the wall here, so it kind of just covers any normal car. Um, there and then I also brought uh, I also brought the interior floor plan I know you guys probably don't care too much about it but this whole corner right here which is the main entrance corner we've got the open glass and it's really open to the seating sales area so it creates a nice open environment there do you, do you mind if we pass those around yeah sure Oops. There's also a little mini site signage plan here, but I don't think you, we need that for this. <laughs> um, and then I do have samples, too, of the brick in the CMU, if you guys want to see it. Um, does anybody want? I mean, they can pass that around, I guess, too, if you want. Are there questions for the architect? No? Um, while we're looking at this, I think there's a question regarding delivery. Um, so maybe someone can address that at the same time. Yeah. Joe Carvalho, owner of 267 Main Street. Um, to, to address the delivery uh, issue, so we have deliveries every night for our product deliveries. Those come in around 2, two o'clock in the morning, and those come in on straight box trucks. So they would just be coming off Prospect Street and backing right into the back door and just taking the racks off the lift gate, wheeling them in and leaving. And we have one bigger uh, product delivery once a week. And I think for this store, it'd probably be a, on a either Wednesday morning or a Saturday morning. And what we do for that is we have the ability to get off hours delivery on sites like this, where it would be a little tight while, while we're open. So they would be there before we open. So. So all your deliveries get done when you're not open for business? Not all. Uh, all on this side, it would be because it's a tight site. That, that, right. That's yeah. Right. And so and when we're talking about the daily product delivery, those are always done off hours while we're closed. Okay. But the DCP, when we have the big trailer comes in, when they provide all the cups and lids and coffee and all that, that one is a once a week delivery. And we can manage that one to either A, come in on a straight box truck, or come in off hours or both so and that's probably what we're looking at here and I've already spoken to people to kind of be prepared to add that to, to the list if we are so fortunate to be able to do this so that's where we're at so um, we should be able to do that um, mr. Weber on the off hours the neighborhood are they going to be a really impacted by the noise so gosh I you know the, the noise is minimal I the trucks come in and it'll make as much truck as a box truck can make, but it's just a matter of a, a lift gate that goes down, they wheel it off, and they take yesterday's racks and wheel it on and lift gate up and away they go, and they're there for five minutes, like literally, that's a quick, quick delivery on the product, so. Yeah, it's just uh, trailer truck sometimes makes, can make either so, a lot of noise yeah. or can make little noise depending on the operator. Yeah, the only trailer truck we would have maybe is that one week, once, once a week delivery. And again, that would be one time a week and we could probably go Wednesday or Saturday. I'm thinking Saturday might be better because the traffic is even lower if, if they spill into 5 or 5.30, if they have a truck breakdown or that kind of thing. There's just no traffic there. That's just a s the neighborhood. Yeah. It's the only one I'm concerned on. So since I'm up here, I'd just like to add, uh, uh, address a couple more things, if sure. I could. Yeah. So I've been in town now. It's going to be 35 years in the fall. And uh, I have the four locations, uh, probably the, you know, uh, some of the toughest locations to run in all of New Hampshire, which is uh, one being Canal Street, probably the worst, the toughest. And I've been doing this for 35 years. I, I'm, you know, this project, um, I'm a neighbor, I'm, I'm, I've been in the community for a long time. Um, I took that Canal Street store, knocked it down, rebuilt it, 
to what it is today. Did the same thing at East Hollis Street. That was a, like embarrassing kind of a shack a gas station there. And I was able to purchase it and do that. And I'm really looking forward to doing the same thing here uh, and kind of beautifying that spot because it really does need it. Um, but the other thing, and I know Rick touched upon it, is that we're hands-on, like we manage our stores. Some of the stores that you see have issues. These guys are investors. And they come in here, they hijack my location, that I should have, to be honest. And, you know, they disappear. And not only they not manage their stores, but then, you know, they're not invested in the community either. You know, I, I'm very proud of the fact that, um, you know, I'm a long-standing sponsor with PAL, uh, the National Children's Home, and, you know, the veterans, and all those kinds of things that we do here in town. Rick sits on the board for Harbor Homes, and I'm surprised he didn't mention that. And he's also been asked to sit on the board for PAL. So these are the kinds of connections that are important to us and the things that we've done over the years. So we're not going to walk away from something. If it isn't perfect, we'll work with you. We'll work with everyone. We want this to, to be the best it can be. And Rick already knows. I told him, this opens, that's where you're going to spend your time. And for a long time, it's going to be seven days a week. So, um, but that's what I've done for 35 years. So, um, again, I just I want to let you know we're part of this community. We're not going to walk away from any little issues just because we opened the doors. That's not going to happen. Um, you know, and, and I hope that you know, site-wise, I just wanted to say one thing. There is sort of a misnomer that there's a lot of walking traffic at that site. In fact, it's almost non-existent. Mm. If you spend time there, th there's no walking traffic. And I know that it's been a long-standing plan to extend downtown. And to extend downtown, you want walking traffic. And right now, your walking traffic stops at CVS and Seven Star Pizza right here at this corner. And I could probably think of nothing else that could draw more people to walk into that, that, that direction than this location. And as far as, you know, needing bike racks, well, that kind of thing, that's, that's fine. That's an easy one. Um, and I hope that they come ac from across the street from the, from the hospital and whatnot, but I'm not, I'm not sure that that will happen. Um, but I know that the former mayor used to say that downtown should go from the hunt to the hunt. Well, this will, I think, help that a lot. Um, because, like I say, the, the, I've, spent, I've spent hours there now. And just, I've, I've actually parked there for a couple of hours one time just to see how much walking traffic there was. And I saw one elderly lady for two hours. And so um, I'll challenge anybody to go out there because I know that that seems to be a really big concern about the walking traffic. And hopefully that will come. But it's not there now. So just wanted to kind of address that. I don't know if that makes a difference. But I'll take any other questions or? Mr. Weber? I just want to say thank you for taking this site and improving it. Thank you. And uh, it's, I think it's going to be great for the site and great for the city. Appreciate that. Other questions for? Uh, as far as the walking traffic goes, um, when you go a little bit further, mm -hmm. the Lake Street intersection, mm -hmm. down Main Street, it, it does pick up again down that intersection. There may be people coming from the plaza. I, I, I'm telling, I, I just uh, telling you, right directly in front of this location, I've spent a lot of time. In fact, it was so funny because the first time uh, Jackie and Chad met on site, I, uh, after a while we were talking, we were there a couple hours just talking about details, and I actually then turned to them and I said, you know, the strangest thing is I haven't seen anybody walking. And as I was saying that, somebody was walking across, but, um, but you know, it just doesn't, it just doesn't have that kind of, and I don't, you know, I, again, I think that this will create that, at least to have a calling card to something to, to go to. Other questions? No? All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, any further questions for the applicant or any of their consultants at this time? No? No? Uh, anybody in the audience wishing to speak in opposition or have concerns with the plan, please come on forward and state your name and address for the record. and. Uh, Good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the board. Let's see if I, 
Uh, my name is Todd Whitney. I live at 32 Gordon Street in Nashua, and I also uh, have a law office. I have practiced law at 1 Prospect Street. I'm directly across Main Street from this property, this proposed use. Uh, and I have been there since 1988, and I've been in my home since, uh, I think, 19, uh, about that same time. Uh, I was here at the zoning board meetings for this. I spoke in opposition at the zoning board. Um, I would like, to, uh, by the way, I do have some notes I would like to just distribute if I could approach and bring them up. I don't have enough for each member, but I have most of them. I have one for Attorney Pullman I can give him. Uh, just one sheet of notes. Uh, you can pass it to Mr. Dukren and we can, that's a copy we can have or? Yeah, it, okay. it, it doesn't take about two or three per side. Two or three per side. I didn't bring a full that's complement right. of eight, yeah, if you could share a little bit. Yep. Yeah, that's, you can take that. Um, at, at the zoning board level, <laughs> let's remember the primary con concern was the, um, the drive-through and, uh, and the location of the drive-through being parallel to Main Street. Um, this was the concern of, initially when the, when the project was first presented to the planning department, it was the concern of the planning department, it was the primary concern at the zoning board, it was my primary concern, and as a result, the uh, project was sent back for a second pass with additional, um, additional aesthetic uh, improvements to the drive-through. You have to remember uh, that in, in this proposed situation, we have the drive-through parallel to the main drag, parallel to the main street. You don't see that in Nashua except for a few other locations. You see it, uh, and, not, and not, you de definitely don't see it downtown. You see it at the uh, East Hollis McDonald's. The, uh, the window is right there along East Hollis with the traffic. You do see it at the Burger King across from Barnes & Noble down in South Nashua. You see it a little bit at the Wendy's way up at the northwest corner of the city just before the, the boundary. Uh, the, actual, the actual window is around the corner, but you see the stack um, on Main Street. So uh, my primary concern is that is the aesthetics of the drive-through lane being directly right there on full display in downtown Nashua. I grew up in Nashua. To me, Nashua is a special city and the most special part of Nashua is the downtown, and the definition of downtown is still the hunt to the hunt and a block or two in each direction. So if, if the south part of downtown isn't as well off as the nice part, that's no reason to not uh, take a, a really hard look at this. You have to remember when the project was first presented, the issue of the drive-through being front and center on full display was of such concern that the city, ex the city explored the possibility of concealing the drive-through in kind of like a kind of a tunnel, so that the the um, there would be a the side of the building would be on uh, Main Street and the, the cars would pass through. But that, after f further consideration, that idea was rejected because they didn't feel you could have cars in a tunnel; it wasn't safe. Um, but uh, the, as it's been testified here before. Um, the drive-through apparently is a must-have. The uh, Duncan's doesn't even want to prove them without a drive-through, and I understand this lot is a little bit tight. And I don't doubt that this proposal, as proposed, it's functional. It would not flawlessly functional. It's substantially functional, but I'm not convinced that this is the one and the only configuration on this piece of property that uh, would uh, support a drive-through with a Duncan's. I furnished you with. Um, a picture of 260 Main, <coughs> 260 Amherst Street, which is an even smaller lot and an even smaller, uh, even smaller structure, and the drive-through there is on the side. You generally see the drive-throughs on the side. You see it at Taco Bell in downtown Nashua. Uh, you see it um, at you see it at the Walgreens uh, prescription pharmacy drive-through. Uh, you see it in a lot of other places. That obscures the, the drive-through window isn't right there for us all to see. Uh, if I, I think this project lacks may perhaps a little more imagination and a little more effort. There, some exceptions, some exceptions were, have not been sought. For instance, this stack lane is 13, which I understand is more than what is required. That only raises the question, what could have been done with the extra property if they had submitted a plan that had only the required number of stack vehicles? Uh, this property has, uh, I think it's 14 parking spots. 
The one at 260 Main has uh, a lesser amount. What if they had asked for exception for perhaps less parking spots, freeing up more property to perhaps reconfigure the, the situation slightly, uh, approach from a different direction, and have the pickup window on the south side of the property or, or reconfigure the, the lot entirely and have it on the west? We're kind of stuck in a, between a rock and a hard place. Under the master plan in Nashville, we want the buildings up on the sidewalk and we want the parking in back. That's great, except not, this is one that needs a drive-through and, and according to the applicant, the only possible way they can get the drive-through is to have it on full display with parallel to the traffic in Nashua in a pretty nice section of downtown. Uh, I think if they tried harder, re looked, perhaps did away with maybe less done, it, the testimony just here is that the drive-through right now is almost not, the walk-in traffic is almost non-existent. Uh, you see a lot of properties that have um, very small dine-in. Apparently, if the drive-through is the main attraction, where the money's going to come from, do we need as much dine-in space as is presented? Could it primarily be more like Press Cafe across from Somerset Plaza, where there's a, a very small dine-in, that was a McDonald's, as you know, a very small dine-in, and all the action is in the drive-through. Uh, if, so if they shrunk the building a little bit, re perhaps done away with the, uh, some car spots at 260 Amherst, as shown in that satellite photo, I don't believe there even is a slip lane or an escape lane at 260 Amherst. I could be wrong on that, but it, from the satellite photo, it doesn't look like it. So once, uh, and I would have spoken at, in opposition at the second zoning board hearing, but I was ill that night, uh, we have this fence, which is window dressing, it's, it's better than nothing. Uh, you're going to be walking on the sidewalk. The cars will be so close you could reach through the fence and touch them, the ones that are stacked up in the, in the drive-through lane waiting to get to their pickup window, the minivans, etc. cetera. Uh, wrought iron is a lovely architectural feature, uh, but it wouldn't be my first choice for concealment. Uh, I, don't, I think that's a, the... the the elevations are not here anymore, but uh, you could do something perhaps with the width of the pillars, perhaps slightly wider. Oh, thank you. Yeah, the pillars are not bad, but um, the wrought iron, there's no one suggested, no one suggested any vegetation. That might have helped. Uh, but we're all focused on the details here, the details of how this would function, and some, at some point things become so obvious that you, you tend to miss the big picture, kind of lose the forest for the tree, uh, lose the forest for all the trees. You don't have to accept a project that has the drive-through on full display right here in downtown Nashua. It's not the historic district, but it's not too far from the nice part of downtown. And uh, when zoning approved it, I think it was kind of like, well, we've gone halfway. If, let's see if planning w wants to take this. And, and through all this work, they've gained a favorable recommendation from the planning department, but that doesn't mean you have to accept it. We're all going to be stuck with a drive-through, slow-moving drive-through these windows, fast-moving whatever, right there on full display. It would be much better if they came in on the side you got to remember, Walgreens was a compromise plan. Originally, the city wanted Walgreens all fronted on the sidewalk. It isn't because it was a compromise. They say, well, let's put it endwise. Let's have at least part of the building on the sidewalk, and most of it extends back. Something like that could be done. There's no reason why you have to accept this as proposed. You could send it back for a do-over. Uh, other than that, uh, you've got... <laughs> A few, the only other comments I would make are there aren't enough waste receptacles here. Some people are careless. Uh, and uh, I definitely couldn't accept an, an audio crosswalk signal. I mean, not accept, I, I definitely would oppose that because on the cold winter temperatures, though, that there's, there's a sharp tone that sounds uh, to alert the people and then a signal that tells them to walk. If I have to hear that constantly while I'm in my office trying to get work done, that's going to be a a problem for me. But um, again, I would say 
let's not forget the fact that we've got well, a wrought iron fence is the only thing that supposedly saves downtown Nashville from having to look at a stacked up uh, lane that's on full display at the front of the property. I think you should send them back for a do-over. Try something different. Thank you. Uh, it, 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 yep. Hang on a yep. Mr. Robbins. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first off, thank you for 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 coming and 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 presenting. And, and as you were you were speaking with with obvious passion and concern, and I, I certainly respect that. One of the things that occurred to me just right off the bat, and, and this may not be a fair question, and I'll right. go with that if, if you would. The site's been derelict for 20 years. If you had to choose this or the way it is. Oh, uh, I, would, I would choose the way it is because another suitor will come along. Sometimes you have to wait for love. In another 20 years? Uh, it won't be that long. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. All right. Uh, anybody else wishing to speak in opposition or concern to the plan? Anybody wishing to speak in favor of the plan? Uh, the applicant like to address um, some specific topics here. Um. Sure. Um, good evening again, Mr. Chairman. Uh, sure. Chad Brannon, Fieldstone Land Consultants. Um, I just want to speak to, you know, with all due respect, the inference that we haven't spent a lot of time on this project. Um, we've been working on this concept for um, the at better part of a year. And that's consistent, and I mentioned it briefly in my intro, many, many meetings with um, town staff members to really brainstorm the best layout for this site. That's what we have. And the, it's the best layout for the site, and as I stated earlier, um, for the community as well, because with this layout, we're able to accomplish a lot of improve, off-site improvements, improvements to Prospect Street. We've looked at many, different options for this for this property and and we've come back ultimately to this layout it provides number one it meets a lot of the master plan components as far as the building situated forward that was a huge thing when we met with um, you know city staff and reviewed the plan is you know trying to have that streetscape appearance the elements that we're proposing along uh, Main Street are are right across the street. I think the hospital has a brick and wrought iron fence. And it doesn't do it a lot of justice when you're looking at, you know, a, a, a static elevation view and it doesn't have some landscape features in it that we um, have incorporated in, into the plan as well. There's, there was a, there's a perspective view of an older design that's on the cover sheet of the plan set that we submitted. And I think that, that, um, that perspective view on the cover sheet shows the fence and it also shows some cars in the drive through and I think the key is it, it's a it's a clean aesthetic look the building is is well designed we've we've worked hard with staff on incorporating a number of vertical elements and in details that they've asked us to in, incorporate and revise and we've agreed one of the conditions is to work with continue to work with them on tweaking some of those elements but taking a look at the site itself, like the entrance has to be off of Prospect Street, right? So that sets you up for a layout. Um, you can't come off of Main Street that close to a signalized intersection. That creates, you know, more uh, chaos, if you will, from a traffic standpoint. Um, and then when you start looking at, you know, well, if it's going to, it has to have a drive through. Corporate requires a drive through. So that's a requirement. They also require a partial bypass lane. There's, and you start weighing in some of these things. This layout fits best not only with the local ordinances, but also is the best plan for the site. We firmly believe that. Uh, we've vetted that out. We've spent a lot of time in the process. So, um, and I understand, you know, the, the, the gentleman that was up here didn't have the benefit of, of seeing us work through that process, but it's not something that we've just put on a plan and are coming here and presenting lightly. 
Um, we, we're, we're quite confident that this is the best plan for this project. Um, the other thing that I'd like to point out is we meet all the regulations. We meet the stacking distance. We actually exceed the stacking distance regulations by a fair margin. Um, we, we went to the zoning board based on guidance from um, staff in how this plan should be set up. We sought the variances out that we needed for the use on this site. And I just want to bring up that this property, this, this a similar layout to this, not as, as good, but was a, approved, I think, back in 2001 on this site as well uh, um, through the, the zoning board and, and for whatever reason didn't go forward at that time. But for two different companies to come up with a similar layout I think speaks to the engineering logic that this is the best layout for this site when you're contemplating um, you know, a, a drive-through um, element. So that, that um, I think that addresses you know, the concerns relative to the, the effort and the energy put into the plan. I would, okay. Thank you. Questions of the applicant while they're up there? Mr. Duker? Yes, uh, thank you. I'd like to have the, ask the architect, if she doesn't mind, um, to give her, her opinion um, regarding the concerns brought by the attorney. Regarding the master plan and, and the, the treatment of the facade and the fence. Opportunity to make it any better? C can I? Yeah. I'll let I'll let the architect address that. But in all fairness, we were the ones kind of presenting the application when we went to the to the zoning board. We presented, I think, five options on how to address the aesthetic elements along um, the main street corridor. There was different versions of fencing and landscaping and, and this is the, the um, detail that they felt fit best in with the, um, the elements, frankly, that currently exist in a number of areas in the, in the city. Um, as it relates to the building architecture, the brick you know, was a, one of the latest components that we incorporated into the plan because that was uh, um, feedback that we received from staff. In fact, you can see on the plans that we submitted, I mean, that was a fairly recent revision because the plans we submitted in, I think in May, um, incorporated an older building design, which was, a, I think, a little more modern um, design and does, doesn't pull that brick element in. But I'll hand the floor over to the architect. Thank you. I don't want to belabor the point, but I, I know you went through extensively what you how you came up with this, and, and Chad just reminded us, but based on what we just heard, uh, are there any further opportunities to get closer to what we may be desiring? Um, as far as the building materials, I feel as though this, honestly, we, we did present, as Chad mentioned, five different options of different materials, different heights, different configurations. We had. Uh, brick and brick, like a recessed brick piece, so it was more of a solid wall, but it was too much. You know, um, we had brick with CMU, CMU piers with the brick in between. We had um, all wrought iron, and and this honestly pulls a lot of the a lot of the materials together. The brick from the building, the wrought iron fence, kind of that that black color with the charcoal color on the coping. It kind of just pulls everything together, and it, it, it does look really nice. Um, it, it's the nicest of the five options that we chose and um, or that we that we presented um, and I think it was the right choice you will obviously see the cars between the wrought iron pieces but it's not going to your eye is not going to be drawn to it as you're driving you're going to see you're going to see a wall and a fence you're not going to be like staring into as you're walking of course you're going to see it but I think we talked about pedestrians and what we think is so, happening. So I'm sure you're familiar with the master plan for the downtown, where, as described, you want the sidewalk, the building right up against the sidewalk. Yes. Between, and the intent shunned to 
well, continue doing that. For the, as you go for the south beyond uh, East and West Hollis Street. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I mean, I know what it is, but I can't relate it. Uh, but as, a, as an architect, what is the real purpose for having that kind of a arrangement as opposed to separating the building with, with the, a line of cars or, or I, what have you? I, I feel like it's, it's pedestrian access. I mean, it's, it's, you're walking down the street and all your buildings are right there and your access is right there. I'm not sure that this, I know that this site obviously fits into that master plan, but I'm not sure based on what I've heard with pedestrian access that we have that same feeling that we would have a quarter of a mile down the road where all your business frontage is right there. It's kind of not the same uh, feeling in this area as you drive by. Um, but I think, as Chad mentioned, we did explore different options. We had the building, we had the drive-through window on the side, and then you'd only have six car stacked to the street. We had the building pushed back. We thought about it with the parking lot in the front and we weren't allowed to do that. So we've, we've definitely explored different things and, and I feel like we've, we've beautified that street facade. I mean, all four sides of this building are decorative. So it's, it's, it's designed to suit the area. So, so that whole idea of having the buildings up against that, it's a, it's more like a storefront uh, situation. Right. Walk in, walk out. Right. Uh, whereas a Dunkin' Donuts that's predominantly going to be servicing drive through traffic, it's not serving that purpose. We did, well, where the crosswalk kind of brings people into the building, that side of the building does talk, speak to that. We have the storefront there, we have the entrance, we have everything kind of calling you to that side of the building, which is obviously visible from as you're coming towards the building on that end. Um, and that's where we're directing pedestrians into the building. You, wouldn't, you don't want people to walk through the drive through lane. So that it, the wall kind of serves that purpose too. People aren't kind of just walking into the site. Yeah, thank you. Other questions? Thank you. Thanks. Um, at, at, at this point, it, I would give the um, anybody in the audience, if, if you do have one, any other further questions or concerns, this is sort of the last opportunity to voice it. You, you need to come forward if you do. Go ahead. Yep. Sorry, Whitney. Again, I'll keep my remarks brief, um, and I. I don't doubt there was a, a substantial amount of work done. I, I, I think Chad has uh, misinterpreted what I said. When I said not enough effort, I don't mean that there wasn't a lot of effort. I mean that there wasn't enough effort to, to try something else. Um, yeah, and Chad is correct He says when he says this is the best option for the site. That's the problem. Yeah, it's the best one from their point of view. It's not the only one. And I believe, um, you know, I think this, the residents of Nashua leave it to you, we're stuck with the aesthetic of this for all eternity afterwards. And if, and uh, the, we had better get it right. Otherwise, we've got a, you know, a, a slow moving drive through right there on, the, on a nice part of Main Street for everybody to see. And it's supposedly been prettied up. But um, I think what else, I, the only other thing I wanted to say in rebuttal was that uh, um, I think if, if, you, if you absolutely must have the drive-through in the front, you could have offered more concealment. I would have been happier with a, a solid wall that blocked up to say the, the driver's head or something like that, but I'm not sure this aesthetically that would be as pleasing. Uh, but, oh, the last thing I wanted to say in rebuttal is, <laughs> yeah, it's a tight site with difficult c confines, but look at the other ones. I think uh, if you look at Starbucks on, um, uh, at the entrance of National Mall, they essentially have about the same area and a smaller footprint and a smaller drive-through. This uh, small sites are not that uncommon. I've I've given you the uh, the example at 260 Amherst, um, and uh, you can find other ones where they work with even less land, smaller structure, less parking lots. Uh, I still think something else could have been done, and uh, you don't have to take it the way it is. You could I think. 
this is the the best one from their point of view. I don't think it's the only one, and it, they, it should have been presented. If it's not ideal, it's not maximized, it's not optimized, then it might be more aesthetically pleasing for this part of downtown Nashua. That's all. Okay. Thank you. At this point, I'd ask, is there any other questions that the board has for the applicant or staff with regard to the plan while we're in the hearing? Nothing further? You Other? do have a communication from um, Economic Development Director yep. that you referenced earlier. I didn't know if the board wanted to look at that. Okay. Uh, that was in your packet. I did see that. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. At this point, I will close the hearing uh, and move into the meeting and uh, welcome any discussion uh, that anybody has at this point. Mr. Barley? I guess I, I would just start off on sort of the point we left off on, which is I think it's really a question of aesthetics. And Mr. Robbins, I thought your point was well taken in terms of, you know, this design, even if it's not, you know, necessarily what, what some people might choose in terms of what this site location would be, it's a really substantial improvement over what's there. Um, but beyond that, I mean, I think it, I actually think aesthetically it looks pretty nice. I think the, the, the combination of the brick and the raw iron is nice, but, but beyond that, I, I don't know that there's, you know, if we push the building back further from the street and created more parking in front, for example, or created parking in front, I, I don't know that that necessarily would improve the aesthetic. So, I mean, in my personal view, I think they've done a pretty good job. Um, and, and so I, I guess I, I'm, I'm not seeing something here where I would say there's another site design that I can envision that I would say, well, that, that's a better site design from an aesthetic perspective. Mr. Peterson? Uh, someone mentioned uh, they weren't allowed to put a parking lot right on Main Street. It had to be off to the side or in the back. And uh, isn't there also an iron rod fence right across the street at the hospital so like these two fences would be near each other and fit together yeah I think somebody mentioned that as well mr. Mikuchin? I I'm uh, <coughs> having a hard time with this I I'm not sure exactly what the reference to the master plan is and forcing buildings to be on the street. As a planning board member, I think it's off. I look at CVS, every time I drive down or up Main Street, I see a horrendous looking power supply on the side of the building right on Main Street and, I, and a drive-through that was tucked in there. If you've ever gone into the CVS drive-through, Trust me, you don't want to go back. It's unbelievable. <laughs> and it's visible from the street. And it's all forced by moving that building forward and forcing the building to be right on the street. I feel uncomfortable when I'm coming up East Hollow Street, approaching Main Street. You can't see anything until you get right up to the line. Some, if the city thinks that's the way to go, I'm not going to... I'm not going to fight that, but th I think this site would be far better off with the building towards the back inside corner set up in a way that the drive-through lane and the stack lane was behind the building, which is the common way to do these, if it's going to be there. But that doesn't solve the problem of, of a 13-car stack. We when we approved, the zoning board approved the Broad Street Dunkin' Donuts, we had a, a, a rule that they had to have a 15-car stack. And if they didn't have that, th it had to come back to us. It couldn't, it, it pl planning couldn't approve it without that 15-car stack. East Hollow Street backs up. I mean, I think these guys are great. I think they're probably the best people that could run it. But that doesn't mean it's going to work. To me, 
having a drive through this close to this location in Main Street, I know the zoning board approved it. I just, I think it's cramming way too much into this little site. I know the city wants it there. I know it's good for the city to develop this land. I get all of that. I think this is gonna be dangerous. I think it's gonna cause problems with traffic. I just look at it like, I, I respect traffic engineers, but they're hired by the company that wants to convince us that this is a good idea. So you gotta take that kind of with a grain of salt in my mind. There is no way that people are not gonna take a left coming out of this exit onto Main Street. The people are gonna be in here, they're gonna say, hmm, let me see, I'll go down Prospect Ave, go through the light, sit there, <clears throat> or I'll head out that exit and hang a left when I can sneak through there. That's just human nature, it's what people do all the time. I always think that when I'm down at, uh, at, at the South Nashua, uh, it's not a Dunkin' Donuts, it's another coffee shop that they put in there. They got a proof for Dunkin' Donuts, but it's actually a, uh, another shop. Down right on Spitbrook. And you, co you come out of that mall and you can't take a left. You're supposed to take a right. I would say more than half the cars coming out of that mall take a left. They just do it. Barnes and Noble? No, no, no. no. no press press cafe. Cafe. About, yeah, the, 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 the cafe. Well, I have, and I just think that <laughs> I think this is just too much for this area. I think it would be better if the building was in the back. If the city told them they can't do that, then that's not really fair to them to to send it back. If that was the edict from the city, then I, I'm going to stay strictly with the, the impact of the traffic because even if they move the building, that's not going to make any more stacking space. It's not going to make that problem any better to me. So I'm not going to belabor the point. Um, I just don't think it's, I think it's too much for the site. Mr. Peterson? As a follow-up to what Mr. Rapucci was saying, uh, with regard to the traffic today, around 5 p.m., I was driving south on Main Street and had to make a left onto Prospect Street, and it was jammed up with cars. And that's a typical day, I think, right there at that time of day, and this would just be uh, add more to that complex uh, intersection of cars, everybody going at once. Mr. Barley? Yeah, I mean, I, I guess just sort of a, I'll make a general sort of overview point. I mean, and, it, and I understand your point that, you know, the, the applicant has hired the traffic engineer, so obviously um, you're saying, well, we got to take into account that they're, they're trying to come up with a result that's going to work for the applicant. But, but that's true of every expert that's hired by the applicant. Um, sure. and, and I think we have to look at this from the perspective, of, you know, I understand that folks have expressed concerns about, you know, the traffic flow and the impact, but I do think we have to ask ourselves, do we have, do we have anything that contradicts, you know, the testimony that we heard from the civil engineer, from the traffic engineer? Um, and even from the applicant to the extent that they have, you know, expertise in, in you know, in operating an existing Dunkin' Donuts with a drive through So I, I think the question is if they're providing stacking for 13 cars and that exceeds, as I understand, what's required in the ordinance, do we have reason to think that, you know, the, do we have evidence to suggest that that stacking, as they proposed, is not sufficient? Um, and I know that we have, everyone has their intuitions about how the site's going to operate, but I think we have to look at it objectively as well. From you know, what what evidence do we have to suggest that that's that that's not sufficient? And I just I haven't heard that. I, and I would certainly leave it open just to have somebody say, you know. No, for this reason, I, I think that the site wouldn't function properly. But well, if I could, sure, sure, Mr. Rabucci. Um we get expert testimony. We get 
testimony from professionals, and land use boards are really not supposed to disregard that testimony. Uh, but you can use your own experience, your personal experience, as a, as a citizen of Nashua and a member of the planning board. Your common sense, if you will, to look at something and say, I don't agree that that's going to work because I've seen it not work in other places. So I look at, yeah, we have a stack ordinance that's old. It's, it's, it wasn't contemplating the kind of stacking that Dunkin' Donuts does, which is far more than any other place. Like, there's a lot of other places that have drive-throughs. Banks, for example, pharmacies, uh, believe it or not, the Staples down in South Nashua was actually authorized for a drive through which was never even used. But they don't get anywhere as near the volume that Dunkin' Donuts gets. And when I see cars backing up on West Hollis Street, I've seen cars backing up on Amherst Street, backing up into, as they approach that intersection on Main Street, to me, it's a common sense fact of life that that's what happens at Dunkin' Donuts. They back up into the roadway at certain times. They're, they're peak times. It's rare, but it happens. So I think you can use your observations of what is going to happen. If you have experience, which I think we do, or I do, in observing other locations that have similar setups. Yeah, and, and I agree with that. And I, I agree that you know it's, it's reasonable to, as you said, use both common sense and your own experience. But I guess the only thing I would add to that is there, I, think, I do think there is a, a difference, a substantive difference between saying that you know, this site as constructed as may be the case with other Dunkin' Donuts sites may not op operate with perfect efficiency at all times of the day, you know, every day of the week. But I, I do think that's different than saying that the site is is not functional or that we have you know a material concern about traffic impact or safety or something like that so i think it's important to make that distinction so you know we have a number of these other dunkin donuts sites that seem at least you know in most ways most of the time seem to function sufficiently well you know that they're not that they're not causing material concerns so uh, that's the way I would look at it. It's, it. Because yes, it may be the case that at certain times of day or you know, in limited instances, you know, that, there, that there may be sufficient traffic here to back up onto Prospect Avenue, for example. And maybe that causes some delays or some inconvenience. But I, I, like I said, I would, I would say, is there, do we have a material concern about traffic or safety, whether it's, you know, safety exiting entering or pedestrian safety um, and I'm just I'm not seeing that from what we've heard of what we talked about okay. yeah I mean I my read on this site is it is a little bit different than several of the sites that we've looked at and talked about in the past I mean the, the entrance from Prospect Ave and that is a different arrangement than somebody off Amherst Street or one of the others. And I think myself, that is a good idea. I, I would not be in favor of this site entering and exiting directly off of Main Street. Um, so I think there's some benefit to that way that that's set up. Um, I also think there's benefit to more parking because my own personal experience is if I see any kind of queuing in the drive through is I pull in and park, you know. Um, so mm -hmm. the way that the site is arranged that maximizes the parking I think is a good thing. Um, I think that tends to benefit, it, you know, less stack. Um, I don't think I'm super abnormal. I think, I think there's others like me that don't desire to sit in a stack and would just soon walk inside. You know? um, 
too. So I like the way the, the, the lot is. With regard to the master plan, um, I think it's important for the project to foster that. I mean, I understand, you know, we do have an old master plan, um, but the concept of streetscaping is certainly still contemporary. Um, and, uh, you know, so I'm, I'm sort of, I'm in favor of that. I do like the, the wall. I mean, I was kind of in my head thinking back and forth, should it be solid, should it be open? I mean, certainly when you're driving, I mean, if anybody's driven down the roads that have the sort of dividers in the middle when you're driving down the road, it looks like a wall, right? I mean, you, can, you don't see through the dividers when you're driving, when you're standing or looking across the road, like the, um, like the, the person with the public testimony talked about. I understand that. Um, but I, I feel like there's a balance there. Um, I'm not a huge fan of walls either. They tend to become graffiti walls, which look really poor, I feel. Um, we don't see a lot of gra fences, like wrought iron fences get graffiti on them. We see a lot of walls get graffiti on them, a lot. Um, so I, I think there's a benefit there to that type of surface, um, having, having like that wrought iron effect. Um, so that's, that's kind of, I, I like the aesthetic, <coughs> I think the brick is a big addition to it, um, and it's really going to fit in well with the area, um, so that, that's a positive thing in my mind, that's where I'm at. Mr. Robin. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I'd just like to build for a minute on, on what you and Mr. Varley said. Um, for example, having a wall would be horrible. Um, it, it, it would be an invitation to uh, get tagged, and I, and I think it would also be a, a very poor face toward the road. Um, the folks who are presenting this have, in my opinion, as a layperson, they've done their homework, they've jumped through a lot of hoops, they have played the game according to all of the rules. There are some things here that if I, if I had my druthers, I might play with, um, but that's, that's not my position. In this, my position as a, as a member of this board is to look at it, evaluate it uh, according to to what our rules say we need to use to evaluate it, and make a decision one way or another. And where, whereas, I, I still am a little concerned about the space. Um, I don't see any better way to do it. Uh, my guess is that if there were a better way to do it, it would have bubbled up at some point during the process that everybody has gone through, including, uh, you know, folks in the city and, and the folks sitting here. Um, I can't, I can't see a reason not to approve this. And, and having said that, I, I, want to, I want to thank the gentleman who, who came and, and spoke about this because uh, I think it's very, very important that we not be complacent. I think it's very, very important that we always look at things critically. And I think it's very important that the folks in this room heard what you said and heard your concerns. And I suspect that this is not the first time. Um, and I would suspect that, that one of the reasons we got as good a presentation from them as we did is because there are people like you who have concerns about this and want to make this the very best possible. I think everybody wants to make this the very best possible. So I, uh, my intention, absent anything else, would be to, uh, to vote for this when it comes time to vote. Mr. Duper. I just want to make a note about wood engineering because um, of the traffic concerns, um, especially. So, as this plan went through the city engineering review, um, led by Mr. Joe Mendola, who's in 
back there. Um, it, it did get a very thorough review, and, and Joe came up with in the order of 60 something comments, many of them significant. And um, the applicant did address them, you know, um, adequately. Um, but we still remained nervous about the traffic, uh, <clears throat> knowing that we have had a pretty bad experience with the one on West Hollow Street. I think I'm the only board member who was on the board at the time. Roger certainly was here. And um, until they were threatened with a revocation of the site plan, then they, they acted. They made some internal changes um, because the traffic was backing up backing up on West Hollow Street and creating a real hazardous situation for us. Um, and, and so we in city engineering did talk to um, traffic engineer Wayne Husband um, because he's the one who really reviews this, that stuff. And he, he described it, his uh, discussions with the applicant's traffic engineer, Mr. Han, and um, that they were working through all, all those issues. Nevertheless, uh, the traffic analysis is based on assumptions. Right? How many vehicles are coming this way and that way, and how many trips they're generating, and so on. So you're, you're faced with internal <coughs> traffic issues that will have to be dealt by the applicant, and then you're faced with street traffic issues that would be a city problem and will be a problem for the traveling public. And so that's why we came up with that requirement in the stipulation to have it revised six months later, six months after opening. I think you don't see that often, um, but I think it's, it's a good idea that we get to revisit um, traffic, and, and we have a commitment from the applicant that they will do that. Yeah, it's actually a requirement if the plan is approved for that condition. So I think that's pretty much the only fallback that we have on the city side when it comes to dealing with you know the, the traffic situation that still we are nervous about. Mm -hmm. So what happened? Excuse me. Go ahead, Mr. Pucci. What happens six months from now if they build it, they do the new study, and traffic is far more intense than they expected it to be, and the problems exist there? What do you do? You, you say, oh, okay, well, I guess we shouldn't have done this? We have to come up with mitigation measures. But what about... I don't see how that happens if, if we approve this site plan and then six months from now there is engineering information that says something different well what, what did they do at west hollis they made they did had mitigation measures there right they had to facilitate internal to the to the site they did yes mm -hmm. they didn't do any traffic control there so they just they changed the way the drive through wrapped around if i'm not mistaken to be able to they separated the parking from the drive through but, right, which before they had conflicts. Right, so that's why I said they have a chain there, because they stop cars from coming through there for that reason. Mm. But anyway, I, I was just, it was, uh, as it, I mean, if it's a concern of engineering, it's a concern of engineering, but I think it has to be a concern of engineering now, not six months from now. Well, like you, Mr. Rupuji, talked about traffic that were the expert. You know, until you have the information, data, you know, contesting what they're presenting, then you have no choice but to go along, but put some kind of a, something in place, some measure in place, some mechanism in place that we can come back and address. Now, I don't know what the redesign will be. Um, it needs anybody's guess if it results in, in a negative situation um, six months later. I can't do that speculation. I can't say you haven't demonstrated that you're providing a good level of service in, in your analysis. 
because they have they have shown that they, they're going to maintain a good level of service in the traffic operations. That's, I mean, that's that's true of every traffic report that's ever done, right? I mean, it's always based on, on assumptions, right? I mean, you can't. That is true, and yeah. that's why we are saying we want you to now test your assumptions six months later. Right. So I'm just saying it wouldn't be unique to this site. I mean, that's true of right. any traffic impact analysis that's done. Mm. That is true. So we've, I sell them. I, I could say never have asked anybody to come back and and check the results. Mr. Peterson? And one thing to do at that six-month review is to uh, take a closer look at the timing of the lights and optimize them all up and down Main Street so all the cars, you know, move at the right time. And uh, that can generally go a long way towards relieving traffic jams if the lights are done right. Server. Um, I, I just wanted to say one thing about the, the setup that as a, a, a person that frequents these type of businesses a lot and that I like is that um, Dunks has an option to order your food and coffee ahead of time before you get there um, and the way the entrance is set up and the extra parking actually makes it more conducive for somebody that likes to do that. Mm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I think the one thing I'd add, and it kind of goes along with Mr. Robbins here, and I mean, <laughs> since I've been on this board, I, I, I just think this might be the third attempt at this site to get something on it. It's definitely a problem child site for our city. Um, we do need to think about <laughs> what that site can really support. I mean, I think we've seen housing, we've seen like, other restaurant things I mean other commercial use uh, several other commercial uses and they've had as many or more problems than the one that we're showing right here I know that the housing related sites were top you know and that's because of the contamination um, no it was just the amount of you know cars coming in and, and you know parking and so the, there's a pretty limited capability for this site to support I mean it's got to be a high you know, it's, I think it's got to be a reasonably high volume site, or nobody's going to buy it. <laughs> you know, you know, uh, it, it's just not. It's not going to pay back on, uh, you know, sort of low volume, kind of no car site. We've seen a few attempts at that. You know, haven't gone anywhere, um, and it's a pretty prominent location on the street. So. I think there is definite um, part of this decision is, you know, and we talk. One of our criteria is how does it, what does this do to the surrounding area and the neighborhood? I mean, this definitely elevates it. I mean, yeah. it's bad right now. Yeah. This is, and this actually can <laughs> produce more. I know there's no walk-in traffic, but I think that this can really Rough. produce yeah. Yeah. things that come from and add to it in both directions right. and it's going to add flavor yeah. really nice flavor duncan's flavor <laughs> but <laughs> to the to the area i mean i think it's a beautiful setup yeah. and i think it's beautiful everything about it and i think it's okay. just going to add to the neighborhood in a po very positive way so i'm in favor of it all right any, any further discussion no all right, anybody, I mean, um, stipulation-wise, um, you know, if anybody is thinking about things, I, I think we should address, um, and I guess stormwater management, we have that now. Uh, right, they don't need, they so don't need the stipulation waiver. stipulation number one is really not, there's, there's, there's no waiver being requested, so. It can be deleted. Um, it could be deleted. I, I think the rest of these are. Number, excuse me, Mr. Chair. Um, yep. Stipulation number six. We want to change the date from April 26th to May 16th if you can get updated comments today. Okay. Thank you. I don't know if there are any other, Mr. Peterson? Where in the stipulations does it talk about the six-month review? That's in the comments from the engineer. 
but that's yeah. not in the, in the stipulations. Well, it's it's that um, that's the letter from Joe. Okay, right? so the, I think you refer Steve, to that. is that right? The, the yeah, it came yeah. in the um, yeah. time of the test tonight. It's in the packet that we got tonight, the revised letter from May 16th. So that would be included? Yes. Thank you. Anybody willing to make a motion? Well, I'd make one, but I don't think anybody would support it. <laughs> <laughs> Up to you. Free to all to make motions. But I'd appreciate if somebody made one. <laughs> well, if nobody else is, is going to volunteer, then um, can I give you that opportunity? <laughs> well, no, no, it would be it okay. would be wrong for me to make a motion that I vote against so okay. all right I will make a motion to approve new business number two site plan um, finding that it does meet the requirements outlined in site plan and RO section 190-146 D and section 190-23 F um, with a total of eight stipulations um, and that's reflecting the removal of the original stipulation one um, as a result of the, the applicant no longer requesting or requiring uh, the waiver from the stormwater management standards. So the existing stipulations two through three will be renumbered one through eight. Um, and with a change to uh, new stipulation, old stipulation number six, new stipulation number five, to change the date from April 26th to May 16th. All right, so we have a motion by Mr. Varley to approve with the stipulations as stated. Do we have a second on that, Mr. Weber? Any further discussion or vote? None at this time. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? No? Okay, so we have one opposed. Remainder approving, so the motion passes. Thanks. Luck. All right. So, continuing on with our um, agenda, new business site plans, case number three, that's uh, postponed at this time. Um, other business, case number one, review of tentative agenda to determine proposals of regional impact. Has anybody had a chance to take a look at the uh, tentative agenda in the technical review meeting? Look at it, it doesn't look like there is anything. You want to make a motion? Make a motion that there isn't any. Regional impact. So we have a motion by uh, Mr. Weber that there are no proposals of regional impact. Do a second? Second. Second by Ms. Harper. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? None. Motion passes. Okay. Uh, any discussion items? Anybody? None at this time. Mr. Robin. Is if, if this is this is not uh, so much a discussion item officially as I just uh, wanted to notify the board that uh, my last meeting will be June 6, which is the next meeting. Okay. And uh, if, if I may take 60 seconds just sure. to uh, okay. tell you about <laughs> the place the place that I'm going. I'm going to uh, Sumter County in Florida. It has about 130,000 residents, which is a little bit smaller, a little bit bigger than Manchester. It has uh, the oldest median age of any county in the country, 62.7. Oh. It also has a community, a senior citizens community, a large, large, large senior citizens community that several years ago had the highest STD rate of any municipality in the country. I read that. <laughs> Too much Viagra. We believe help. everything we read on the internet. Don't we? Yeah. But that's true. Where are you going? That is true. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Where are we going? It, we can uh, talk about that later. <laughs> Sum Sumter County is, uh, much of the southern part of it is covered by something called the Green Swamp Wilderness Preserve. And uh, it's about two to three fifths the size of Hillsborough County. And what a place called the Villages, mm -hmm. which is a uh, uh, sort of a Disneyland for senior citizens. That's one of the 
things. That everybody goes around in golf carts and. Uh, You're gonna hate it. <laughs> you know, I was just there last week. It was. I hated it. It was 85 <laughs> degrees and the wind Sounds was terrible. blowing. Mm -hmm. um, so, I just, I just, being as this is a land use kind of committee, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the land. And uh, I don't know if they have a planning board down there, but uh, <laughs> if they do, at the very least, I'll attend a meeting and uh, give them direction if they need it. So, thank you very much, Mr. Chair. You do a good job thank too. Yeah. Well, thanks. <laughs> thanks for all your time on the uh, on the board. We well, really appreciate thank it. You. <laughs> it's been a treat to be here. It really has. Great. Any further discussion items? A motion. Anybody want a motion? To motion to adjourn. Uh, we have a motion by Mr. Weber to adjourn. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, meeting adjourned at 9:40. Good luck in your new venture in Florida. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be just well, that. Well, you know, I think so. Um, near the villages, there's that the big similar development built by Camposi. Uh -huh. yeah, Citrus Hills. Citrus Hills. I, I, I used to, you know, 20 years ago, I used to hear on television all sorts of ads for uh, Citrus Hills. Local developer.